Welcome to the Independent Characters, episode 231. Getting up there. Yeah, I am. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is Carl. This is Josh. This is Jody. And uh, yeah, we're coming to you today to talk about Legion's Imperialis, kind of where it came from, where it's going, maybe. What it is. What it is. What it isn't. Why it's awesome. Who it is. (laughs) Who it's for. Where it is. (laughs) Uh, But show sponsored by brandon yoon and lucas christ from uh our patreon thank you so much for supporting us we really appreciate it yeah absolutely if you want more information about how you can become a patron of the independent characters just check out our website at theindependentcharacters.com. all the information is there uh yeah so we're gonna go over legions imperialis but before we do that let's jump into elite choice you want to go first Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I went with uh, Martin Jones and his Tau crisis suit that he's working on. Um, this is just a really neat paint job of a, a crisis suit and some very subtle uh, modifications to how the weapons were mounted. So they're actually kind of underslung under the hands instead of on the back of the hands, which I think just for that kind of mech look really does the model justice. I, like it's a really, really fitting conversion and just an absolute uh, great job on the paint job, really bringing that kind of anime look to life in a way that it's still 40 K at the same time. Um, I think his, it's a head swap. His, his edging's on point. Too. Yeah. The edging, but also kind of just like the, that kind of blue neon glow of some of the, just the stripes on there actually has like a, a non OSL OSL kind of glowing mm-hmm. effect on there. It's not overdone. It's just kind of the, the right balance. The, edge highlighting is it's still warm incredible up. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's uh it's fantastic and this is the start of a uh, combat patrol i believe also uh, and this uh, a friend gave him the, uh, the kit for these models and it's one of his favorite models uh, and he's done an absolute killer job on bringing this to life. And I know uh, Tau don't get a lot of love in 40K in general, but this one uh, it was just really well done and stood out to me. Bold yeah. colors with yeah. that kind of the, the contrast of the the black, the red, and then the, those blue accent colors for just that, that really vibrant pop. Um, just absolutely loved and can't wait to see the rest of this force come to life. I'm pulling off that base without yeah. getting the model out of balance. Yeah. That, that really like intense red balanced off the black with a nice contrast with the light blue. And then somehow all of that like intense contrast on the model doesn't pull away. Cause so often you do a light color base like that. It just, it just blows out the whole model yeah. and all you're staring at's the base. It's always a trick with like light colored bases and, and it looks fantastic there, especially the weathering up onto the feet, tying it all together. Yeah. Um, yeah I was really su- surprised at how balanced it looks visually especially uh, for the base being so bright that kind of orange yellow very vibrant yeah. um but it really uh it it, it doesn't fight it, it pairs well yeah there's a lot of like paint theory of like when you're painting something with a face pulling yellows into the face and blues to draw the eye there because warmer colors we tend to look at them more and, and yet it, it totally works here yeah it's it's great how would get more love if more of them looked like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Would they though? <laughs> I don't know. It depends how they play. You know, I actually haven't played against Tau in a while. I haven't played been against him in a long time. Yeah. And uh, look, I mean, I probably have some personal bias against them, but I mean, in general, like I love the way they look. I like the fire warriors. I think fire warriors yeah. are one of yeah. the coolest looking infantry models. So, but this guy looks really cool. All right. What'd you pick Jody? what did I pick? So <clears throat> I, I went, I, Somebody, I don't know. You took I, the shell rub. <laughs> I did, but I would, I would have gone that way anyway. I think I literally commented on it. Like, man, I would have picked this one. Um, so Jeremy R. Haugen uh, posted a picture of his 15 year old son and his little brother, the the son's little brother, um, playing with the starter set. Uh, the two of them sitting up at the the table playing out the starter scenarios. Uh, And he says, proud dad, he's helping with painting and assembly, but it's just a picture of the two brothers, the oldest one, uh, 15 and youngest seven. And they've got their reference sheets out and the the transparent range ruler. And, you know, it's the uh, planet bowling ball plant, you know, kitchen table where I think anybody who started this at a young age, you played that That, game. That's how you started. And that's like, you know, a photo of potentially a foundational memory. And, you know, for me, what turned into a lifetime of gaming yeah. And, yeah. and good times that, yeah, it's just cool. I'll, anytime, I think in, in years past, like anytime you see that where it's the next generation of gamers 
the next group coming in. That's it's just cool to see. And and also the the proud dad vibes. Like I have a little drawing of from my daughter of uh, playing the Lord of the Rings miniature game and it's her. She like drew stick figures of like me and dad and there's like little arrows and a troll and and, like I have it in all these years later because it's just like that's that's just good stuff. So yeah, it was cool to see that shared in the community and then young the next the next batch coming around. So it's good stuff. I'm the one who tagged Shell on that one for the Shell's kiss, but at the same time, like it also really uh, resonated with me because that's exactly how I got into this hobby. Is my older brother brought, brought home that box of Adeptus Titanicus in like 1990? It was yeah. j- shortly after it had come out, um, and here I am, you know, 30 plus years later, uh, still still playing games because still playing Adeptus, Titanicus. <laughs> still playing Titanicus. <laughs> yeah, my big brother came home with a uh, a Grenadier old pewter D and D figure and a bag of weird shaped dice. Yeah. And yeah, 30 years later, <laughs> still playing with goofy dice and miniatures. So, two, so that's pretty two cool. tangents off of this one. This is the starter set they're talking about. Did you see they made a made to order battle from a crag? You yeah, know, I did, did see that. You could buy battle from a crag, the, the miniatures <sighs> and stuff. It didn't come with the rule book or all that, but the, the figures and the terrain, uh, crash lander, uh, huh. Terrain just found mine <clears> like <throat> recently, you know, uh, so I've, like probably four of those terrain sets. Are awesome. <laughs> They're, they were great. Yeah. But um, when I looked at that, I was like, that's the kit I got started with fourth edition. And uh, when I rookie, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Noob <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I can't be called a noob anymore because the additions have eclipsed my number by more than that's true. Two. Yeah. <laughs> so we're at 10 now. Is that an official metric? Is that, <clears throat> it is now. It is now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Canonized today. <laughs> uh, but I remember when we bought that, like I thought, oh, these look really cool. And then as I got more models and things progressed, like I recognized where, especially the Marines were lacking in some of the details because they were push fit at the time. Like even the shoulder pads, like you can see like there's some cheating that they do in, mm-hmm. the, in the figure. So the shoulder pad just kind of molds into the arm a bit. And it's not like that. It doesn't look like a separate piece. If you look at the latest kits first off they are still pushed to fit in a lot of cases for the starter sets yeah but you but you get like it, the amount of detail you get now compared to when i started this game back then and and that's not even comparing to when you guys started which was way before me uh it, it's astounding how much the detail has progressed and we'll talk a little bit about that in regards to like the tanks and stuff yeah for, yeah for uh, uh the way they Legion can cut Americans. models up now too especially with all the cad des- cad design for it yeah. um but now now how they cut it up so you can get all these like i, and I always think of the the blood bowl dark elves of how they've done these weird like wraparound things oh yeah and, and that yeah. kid's still still a pain because yeah, that's, they've cut it in too many pieces but uh just the the fact that technology has allowed them to do things and break up models in certain ways just the detail is incredible that's so funny when i think back to third edition that was the templars cover right yes and yes. those marines blowing everybody's mind yeah but i don't think those ones weren't push fit no, no. Th- those no, were no, no, just the proper but those were the new fact, new mark seven at the were time were they all plastic mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and the, <clears throat> and it was funny because you had the dark eldar first gen that were metal not great not great. They're, well, the plastics that were, no. and then these Marines that were just mind blowing. Yeah. But then I hadn't really ever thought about that, that they, there was a addition that didn't have push fit in the box. Hmm. Off to, hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm pretty it's, positive. It's, it's, it's but just it was fascinating just another how, level. how far they've come sculpting and technology wise. And I had a second tangent, but I lost it. So we'll carry on. <laughs> the thing that always gets me now that, that nobody else does is when you build a new plastic kit air quotes on new because they've been doing this for a while is the way they like whoever's doing the the chopping up thinks about how to hide mold lines yeah like that you are you don't have as much thought yeah Yeah. that the way the model goes together will if you just trust the process and do like some basic cleanup the end product will look surprisingly clean yeah um they're yeah either hidden or placed in such a way that they're going to be easy to clean yeah one of the two yeah titanicus i think actually does a really good job of hiding mold lines for the most part uh, the, yeah very much so yeah. yeah as we'll talk about the li especially, models yeah especially compared to oh man the old plasma guns like those were the worst because they were all ridged yeah and mm-hmm. you'd have a seam right, right down, down the, the, ridge. the middle of it come on it's like ah oh. <laughs> 
What are you doing? All right. Turn it into a box. Anyway, <laughs> uh, elite choice. I chose uh, Matthias Angner and his Tyranids. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a second call out for this force, but some beautiful additions for it. Yeah. But I mean, the old one eye he did, yeah. like the, the, <laughs> the striation marks on the carapace are actually like a Tyranid face. Yeah. That's incredible. This is, it, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he came up with it or lifted it from somebody else, but it's, it's, it's really impressive and it's really well done. I mean, oh my God, that's, that's really good freehand actually. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful looking force and that freehand is just absolutely nuts of having, I didn't even notice it honestly <laughs> until you just said it like, yeah, that's how subtle it is. Yeah. It's, which is next level. But it reminded me of like, you know, sometimes you'll see like, oh, this spider's body has like a. Mm -hmm a particular shape on it or you know whatever um sometimes you'll see like hornets or something and it, that's kind of what it reminded me of i thought it was super super cool yeah um it's such a good looking force um that i i was just that it super caught my eye the colors really catch my eye yeah, it's striking <laughs> yeah it, it's really really well done yeah really great balance of of light and dark there yeah uh, with that that what is pink I yeah mean, it's a purpley pink um, mixed into the, but still feeling totally kind of, yeah, grim, dark and blue and black scary and, movie. And yeah. when you painted your, your Tyranids in the way backs, mm -hmm. did you do the little striation marks at the end of the carapace like yes. that? Yes. Some tedious stuff. I did it for a while when I had my Tyranids way back when I did a few of them and I was like, Nope. The <laughs> more I did it, direction. the more I did it, the more cheaty I got at it. And yeah. it was just kind of getting a little sloppier with it. I um, started with it and then I think it ended up with a dry brush for my second edition. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is a <laughs> pretty much, like, yeah. you know, much like the, uh, the towel at the clean edging, you, you better be an edging enthusiast if you, uh, if you there's go a lot route. of it, that's a lot to do it right. Yeah. Well, and it's multi, that's the thing that I think if, if you've never done this on the, the Tyranid carapace, it's multiple passes. Yes. Like three or four of different colors of different. Co it's, it is a, it looks great, but man. It, and this model, is next level. Every plate. And, yeah. every plate. Yeah. and I mean, Bravo. talk about the freehand. I know like Bryce always jokes, Oh, it's just a couple triangles. And then I have this, like I tried to follow this freehand tutorial for painting like a skull one time. And after like five attempts at it, I was just like, I'm, I'm done. I like clearly, I am not cut out. For, for that. And I, I, I lack the patience. Like I truly believe that like something like that you can learn. Yeah. Like if I were to stick with it, I would eventually hit it and, and that'd be good. But I also have a patience limit. I reach that. I'm just like, you know what? I'll get a decal. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time investment to but uh, satisfaction. But then Is I see worth the effort, but then I see something like this and I'm like, Oh man, I yeah. really, <laughs> that would be really nice to be able to do. So great work. Yeah. Matthias. It looks freaking awesome. Looks freaking awesome. All right. So with that, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and we'll go over workbench hobby progress stuff. Be right back. Hey, we're back and uh, let's talk a little hobby progress. I'll go ahead and go first. I probably have the least compared to you two. Oh yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I did finally complete Abaddon. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy with the way he came out. <sighs> Let me back that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as happy as I wanted to be with the way he came out, but I, f as we were just talking yep. before the break about patience, like I, I got to a point where I was just like, you know what? good enough. It's time for me to move on. Like, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not trying to win a golden demon here. I'm not gonna, I, I, I know some of my limitations at the moment. I'm not going to go back and spend more time on this. I spent long enough on him. He's done. I put a salamander on the base. I even did like the fire stuff on, yeah. on his shoulder and you, you got know. further on shoulders for salamanders than Jeff ever did. I <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I had him slam from the way back. <laughs> I simulated like speaking of freehand, I simulated like the salamander on his left shoulder. You only see part of his left shoulder kind of buried in the thing. So I got away with just kind of going, oh, well, yeah. it'd be about here and it'd be like this. Nice, and, cool. <clears throat> That it, you look at it's just go, a couple triangles. <laughs> pretty much. <is>. <laughs> <laughs> Once <laughs> you see it. <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. Yeah. Um, super happy with the way that came out. And then I ended up sticking a salamander head on his on his spike as well, just because there's enough red on the model. Yeah. I didn't want to go ultramarine and I didn't want like a trifecta of like red, blue, green. Yeah. You know, I just, let's stick with this. And I'm really happy with the way those pieces came out. So, I mean, overall I learned a lot painting the model because I used, um, 
not only did I use some of the, uh, uh, the, um, army painter, uh, the speed paints, uh, speed paints yeah. on parts of it. Um, I used my airbrush on pieces of it. I did some of the tips that Caleb and Kat taught shell and I on the cloak and stuff. It didn't come out as quite as good as when Caleb did, it, you know, but <laughs> That's but, a high <laughs> high standard to yeah, compare yourself. But it's a, well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, but it's a good it's a good start. It's a good representation. I'm not. I may go back and touch up his sword a little bit. I saw, like, I saw what I was going for, and then I saw somebody else do it, do his, his blade specifically, um, and and use some some dark blacks in it, and that kind of gave it like a. A, a better I, I don't even know how to explain it anyway i may go back and touch up the sword but other than that I'm, I'm done with them so can i ask you a question about like when you approach and it's tougher with a really big centerpiece project like yeah. that but almost any project i approach i'll think in terms of and it's not like a conscious i plan this out and i write myself notes but it's like background just dialogue of what am i pushing in terms of like this is going to be a stretch for me yeah and what is comfortable can do this without paying attention do you think at all in those terms when you're working on a project <clears throat> yes okay um and, and it's tougher with a big centerpiece because you want it all to be the very very best but yeah that's but just not realistic <clears throat> it's not right. it's not yeah. i think that's a, that's actually what i was trying to say it's not realistic for me to think i'm going to do the best on every component of this thing that i can do i wanted to but at a certain point i just go okay i've achieved a look that i think works there i'm going to leave it at that um, it, which is why, again, like it blows my mind, golden demon painters who just meticulously spend all this time. And then I took a photo of it and I'm like, it's that is not what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. I think that's like, just in terms of a, a thought exercise, giving yourself permission up front to go, I'm going to try hard on this. Yeah. You know, with, um, yes. Abaddon, I always think of like the underglow, like for me, yeah. that would be a spot. I'd be like, right. if I was yeah. painting one, I'd want to spend my time there. Yeah. It's the face and that's just a cool, weird lighting effect. And how do you want to go with it? I thought about that, but too. like the row, his giant cloak, I'd phone that noise in so fast. Like I'd be like, nope, that's not getting much attention. I've from got me. that down. Yeah. Like I've got that down now. If I need to go do that again on another model, I can do that again. Yeah. It's just that thought process I, I think is, of, is kind of valuable. I, th I thought about doing the glow effect. Like mm -hmm. the problem was, um, in my, uh, eagerness, I had uh, already glued the head in yep. <laughs> and I should not have done that. I should have kept it separate. Then I could have gone that route because right. that's actually fairly, I think I could get away with that fairly easily. <clears throat> um, I've got OSL stuff down fairly easily. And that would just be, you know, from the bottom of his head the, coming from the interior yeah. of the neck. Um, I don't think my, I, I'm fine with it. Not having that. Yeah, totally. Like I totally. think he came out great. I'm happy with that. Uh, the next thing, Oh, the, the one other point I wanted to make about that was <clears throat> when I'm doing a centerpiece model or a piece like that, I usually have a plan in my head, like going forward, like, okay, I'm going to do uh, the Marine he's standing on as an ultramarine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And that allows me to progress from inside out, right? You want to hit mm -hmm. the deepest areas you can first in this model. I had a plan going in and then I changed it a little bit and mm -hmm. then I found inspiration on, well, I really want to do the edging now. And it's like, I really shouldn't have done the edging yet. You know? And it was like, so I kind of get excited for certain parts and I got kind of jump yeah. around or jump ahead. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, as, as I would do that piece, I'd be like, Oh, now I got to do this real interior piece. <laughs> Boy, I really should have thought about that. So, so in some cases I found myself redoing pieces because I would, you know, go over it as I'm slopping stuff on the interior. But overall, like he fits with my army really well. Uh, uh, you know, Dave Roberts from Dave Paints sent over Gilliman for the Table War Charities thing. Mm -hmm. I put him next to the Gilliman. And I was like, oh yeah, this looks pretty cool. <laughs> like this is, this is all right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Speaking of his Gilliman, like I also saw how he did certain things on it. And I know like what techniques he uses because he and I have talked about like, oh my God, how do you do that metal on this? He's like, Oh, this is what I do. And he told me years ago, he uses like for his, um, for his silvers. I don't know if I'm 
giving away his secrets. I should just shut up. <laughs> the dude's cracked the code. So. I'll tell you guys behind the <laughs> behind the scenes. I don't want to give away his secrets. He was he was uh, he was jokingly saying. Anyway, let's just say it's not rocket science. And having seen his Gilliman in person and seeing how he did his trim, I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Like I, I see it's a different style. Like it doesn't, it's using metallics, but they're dulled way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. <laughs> you know? it's too late for me with Black Legion, but were I to do another army that had a metallic edge? So this was a battle. Yeah. yeah. You know what? That would look really good it would. on Sisters of Battle. So, so I call that what you're talking about of having a plan. Yeah. I, the phrase I've used for years is I have it painted in my head. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Like yeah. when I approach them, sometimes I approach a project and I go, it's already painted in my head. I like And that. then other projects, again, kind of in a weird way of giving myself permission of it's not painted in my head. I'm going to figure it out. As and I go. then you just know that you're like, stuff's going to go wrong. The other phrase I use in that is when you're in the like figuring it out, the problem is you don't know where to miss with your paintbrush. Like right. if you have a plan, you know, like, oh, I can be sloppy here. Right. Because I can cover it up later. Yeah. Right. But when you're all over and you're just figuring it out, then every time you miss, you're like, ah, I actually have to like really fix that. And this is usually right. how like my test models go uh -huh. or something, totally. right? That's why like, that's so valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll, I'll kind of a rough idea. Well, he's going to be blue and gold and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just start laying down some paint and see what happens. And okay, you know, it's probably not the best representation of what I can do at that point. But now I have it figured out. Painted in my head. Next time. I love that term. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. That's funny. Actually, the last thing on my um, <clears throat> my workbench list is a test model. Oh, so we'll get to that because the other oh. thing I've been working on is my Legions Imperialis stuff. Yeah, you have. Josh, I <laughs> freaking hate you so much. Well, wait till you play. Wait till you play. Then right. you'll love I'm, I know I'm going to. Like, I love Titanicus. <laughs> like, Titanicus is super fun to play and, and playing with you guys makes it super fun. I know I'm going to love this. Um, it was funny, Jody, like you, you and I were chatting about something else and then you're like, oh, I see you at least started doing the weapons and stuff on your yeah, yeah. infantry before you arrived. I was talking to Josh. I'm like, I hate doing these infantry. Like it's different. It's it's two different animals. The, 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 the good thing about it is um, doesn't take a lot. Nope. But it's it's dull. It's a lot of yep. tiny detail. <laughs> it's the and oh, my God, my eyes are going cross. Like it is a lot of detail. It, it's not a lot of detail. It's a lot of tiny detail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't, you know what? It's good though, because you were just talking about sisters of battle. Sisters of battle are a lot smaller than space Marines. Yeah. It's going to be good that I get this practice on small things. <laughs> They're going to be a breeze. They're all yes. upscaled and holy God. Now painting the tanks is fun. Yeah. Oh God. And it's super fast. Like it's super easy. So, um, I'm going sons of, of Horus. I like the green I've, or the green is the like yeah. sea green I've chosen. It's worked out very well. Um, green, black, silver, done. Yeah, that's it. Boom. Yep. <laughs> Unlocked. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I've got about, uh, I got the base coats all on, um, like the 10 rhinos, two of the, whatever they're called. Yeah, the, Kratos. The, the Kratos. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I, it's funny cause I painted one sprue of, of paint all four of those of the real good of the <laughs> Marines. I'm going to, yeah. of the Marines. And then I finished, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I got all that done. I looked over my shoulder. I'm like, oh, there was a second sprue. <laughs> I forgot there was a second sprue. And I got to finish assembling the dreadnoughts. But I mean, it goes fairly quick, yeah. like as you would expect. I think one of the things um, that's pro that's giving me pressure is looking at your guys' work, looking at the stuff you've done, looking at the stuff Austin has done. Like Austin's looks so good. And I'm just like, oh man, I don't want to put mine on the table and have them look <laughs> terrible. So I got I got to work on that it. scale and distance. It all gets honestly you get, you get any, anything it. that you're going to put out. And I'm not saying yours is less than at all. Like it's going to look great, yeah. especially when you're looking at it from three feet away. Like, yeah. It's so it's, small. It's it so looks, tiny. It doesn't it looks matter. amazing. Right. Like when I was doing the metallics on the pipes on the rhinos, it's just like, bleh, bleh, bleh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Done. Yeah, it, wow. That took three strokes and that pipe's done. Okay, cool. Um, but we were talking earlier about detail on models, the detail on these tanks is amazing yeah. yeah yeah it's not as great on the infantry guys i mean it is what it is on the infantry guys and like the captain with the sword stands out and the banner guys look cool but like their legs are you know okay you know <laughs> but holy smokes the the vehicles are just it blows my mind yeah yeah it and how crisp mind. the detail is yeah so crisp yeah 
I was like, you know, if they could upsize these, they'd make some good rhinos for 40K. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they look incredible. I think and imagine if the, the, the 40K rhinos were only in eight pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please, please. Although I can assemble a rhino in like 10 minutes. Right. I'm so fast. At Minus it. the individual tread parts. That's not far yeah, off. Yeah, it is not far off. But holy smokes, they go together really yeah. well. They're so tiny. And you know what's interesting? I, I was giving this a little bit of thought as I was painting them too, because your mind wanders while you're painting this stuff. But, you know, <clears throat> when you look at a Hot Wheels car, like let's just take like a Corvette, right? You have a real Corvette. They don't just shrink down the Corvette and they're like, here's a Hot Wheels car. There's actually like, it, it physically doesn't look right at that scale. Right. They actually like squash it a bit and like stretch it out like to the sides. Like yeah. it, it is not a perfect dimensional representation. I, I, I don't know about these. Like, I wonder if at this scale they look different than, again, you're not looking huh. at, I haven't seen a real Rhino. Like I've seen the one at the Games yeah, Workshop, one. Yeah. But, but that's not a real, Yeah, it's, you know, sort of a Rhino. Uh, they're not huh. fitting 10 of those Marines. <laughs> I know either. Well, so they, maybe it is a perfect representation. I was going to say, yeah. the first Rhinos general. are all clown cars anyways. There's no way <laughs> you're fitting 10 Marines in a Rhino. Either way, the, the models, the tanks are stunning. And Jody, you're working on a Thunderhawk. I don't want to jump this in, but let's, let's talk. Done. Let's, I'm, I'm done. So let's talk about your. Yeah, I was going to say, let me jump in because we're, yeah. we're at a very similar place. So I'm going to go through the what I got done. And then I want to go right back to let's okay. talk about okay. the building and assembly of this stuff. So I painted other than the two warhounds sorry other than the two warhounds i painted the entire can't tell you how excited i am that you're painting titans by the way uh, i'm not that's what i'm saying <laughs> damn it one done i have one well base coated all right it needs all of finish it. I don't anyway know. sorry um the solar auxilia and the marine stuff from the starter box all of that is entirely done so the two starter factions that's are incredible totally finished um i used i did ultramarines uh, for the Marine side. Yeah, and then they look incredible. It, why? Why did I've always not always, I know Mr. Like anti-Marine in recent history, but like my oh, way back in the day was a ultramarine player. Yeah, um, yeah. and in fact it was part of my like eh, about Marines now is because the ultramarines were the first one to get the, and this is Sergeant Ralph of the third squad of the second company. And I was like, my story does not fit anymore because right. I can tell you who this guy is supposed to be. Right, right, right. Um, less so now with the updated timeline. Like you, I'm. That's actually the best thing about the, the updated timeline is you have room to like. Again, it's new Primaris guy. Yeah, I can yeah, just say whatever right. the heck I want. Shut the. Um, so yeah, I've always been an Ultramarine fanboy. Like they are. They were my first Marine Army too. Yeah, Men in Black, the best of the best of the best, sir. When I when I when I painted up my Ultramarines, initially, <clears throat> it was so funny because like everybody's like, "Oh, they're the poster boys." Everybody does, and I'm like, mm, "You don't see them on the table." Yeah, you didn't see them. On the and then I brought them to Adepticon. And people were like, oh my God, it's actually ultramarine. <laughs> like <laughs> there was like three of us, four of us that had ultramarines painted there. We were all like, Hey, you yeah. know, it's interesting at the game. Josh and I will talk about that. We played, um, somebody made the comment of like, well, if they're the best to the best or whatever, like they're the poster boys, how come they're not the best at anything? And it's, I wonder if that's partly why you don't see them as they're much. Not. And that's actually why yeah. I like them is I'm like, no, they're just, this is what Marines do. Yes. They're not genetic defects that have like some weird hyper specialization. They're right. the best at yeah. following the codex of Stardis. Yeah. Well, when you wrote it, it helps. <laughs> I wrote the rules. Cause dad wrote this it. Is the rules. <laughs> um, and then I did a, with the intention of blending them to, to jump back in the, the solar auxilia, I did a riff on one of the kind of, uh, forge world templates for, there's a Calthian faction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's from, you know, that's anyway, solar ox, ox and, and it's a, it's a mostly gray with blue accents. Mm -hmm. So that if I, I know exactly which ones you're talking about, combine the two, it'll look cohesive mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did the same basing for everything. In fact, they're in the, the black original horse heresy books that I have <clears throat> there. And there's what I, when I was digging around on, for reference photos and stuff there, sometimes they have like really bright yellow components. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's just like gray and blue and yeah, you don't want bright yellow. <laughs> so, uh, well, funny enough, what I was thinking is as, cause squad, well, detachment designation is kind of a big deal as we'll talk yeah. about in gameplay. Uh, I'll, what I'll probably do is do another, like the, the next box worth of infantry yeah. will have those yellow highlights, whereas the first one didn't. So there'll that be some visual separate yeah, separation. Cool. Um, 
I used on the Marines, I used from Cult of Paint, the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. They put out a video that that I think did very, very well. I think a lot of people saw it. It was 18 yeah. legions in 18 minutes. I saw that. Which yeah. is funny because I think the video is a half an hour long. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure where the 18 minutes is. And he definitely didn't spend 18 minutes on on anything. So I'm like, I don't know where that is, but why not? It makes um, it sound more clickbait. It does. And, but yeah, I mean, it goes Legions through 32 and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, that's, that's just, it just doesn't roll off the tongue the same way. But it's like, it's like the cyber truck pulling a Porsche. It didn't actually pull it a quarter mile. Yeah. <laughs> it pulled it an eighth mile. Yeah. Huh? There's like, yeah, but it doesn't sound as cool. It doesn't sound like. as good. Um, <laughs> but it's a great video either way. And it's time stamped for whatever Legion you want to play. Yep. Jump in That's and you can smart. see a take on it. That's and smart. I really liked the look of the Ultramarines. Um, and it is a it is a system style of painting where it's you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And result. Part of the system was oil washes. Thank you. Finally yeah. happened. Got the <laughs> tutorial in. Did the oil wash thing. Uh, was in November. So my wife and I have a rule of basically around Thanksgiving time, everybody goes on a buy. Hey, you, you may not buy yourself anything. So Christmas gifts can be purchased. Right. Um, and you don't, I bought myself an Xbox one year in that window and that didn't go over well since one had already been purchased. Oh yeah. That, that didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thus the rule. Um, so waited, got oil paints for Christmas. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> thanks. To the, thanks Aaliyah. Uh, man, it, it does what it says on the tin. It isn't the end all be all panacea answer to everything. Um, but, but it does do for me, mm. but it, mm. it, it works. And for legions, Imperialis vehicles, especially the vehicles. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll use it on my infantry next time. Um, oh, you went all infantry. Yeah, I did, did it too. Did everything Probably at once. Overkill. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think there's a better way to go with infantry. I think just being really mindful about your Zenithal priming and Frankly, I think brushing on contrast paints, which I've seen plenty of videos of people doing yep. is is a really great way to go. Yep. Um, I, I just don't think there's just not enough depth on an eight on millimeter. The, there's not. Yeah, to, I did to really. Have I it did work. base black. I did uh, army painter speed paint. I can't remember the green. I've got it over there. I'll talk about it in a minute. But uh, over the black and I just did a heavy wash on them. Yeah. And, and just and then dry brush a little more green. Yeah, plan for the Good. desaturation. Like yeah. when you put a wash over, it's going to pull the color down. Yep. Yeah. So my my guard actually I actually or, wanted it to pull my color yeah. down. So my solar auxilia, like it's a zenithal prime, and then I was like, I'm going to null oil black wash whatever. You know, I also really like the uh, the monument hobbies black wash, mm -hmm. but I was like, I'm going to do that over just a black to white zenithal prime, and then that my gray is done. And so on the vehicles, I just went in and did all the metal work. And then did the wash over everything, and same with the infantry. Pick Beautiful. out all the silver, <laughs> yeah. one wash, and we're pretty close to done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is definitely, I would say, painting and hobbying on the solar or the legions imperialis stuff. Have is that have a plan, have it painted in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it is so tiny. Yeah. Um, Aaliyah walked in when I was doing the the marine infantry, and she was like wow, that's, that's a lot of little dudes. And I was like, I am very tired of blue right now. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I bet. Are you painting their silver pants blue? And I was like, no, I'm painting their blue gun silver. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, put on a, put on an excellent podcast on YouTube and that's all you yep. do. There you go. It's not very, one, in, one if you can see it, time, it's bro. not yeah. difficult. It's just one stick at a time. So I, oh, also, I, I mean, we have, I even paint some on the base, but I'm like, man, paint them on, yeah. cut the sprue up. So cut you have a stick of sticks. guys yeah. and just toop, 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 down the line. Yep. It's great. It is great. Um, it, it, I, it is tedious. Come on. Like, but, oh, it's I, but it's over fairly quick. Right. Is, is my, it's, it is monotonous work. It is the, it's monotonous. That's the word yeah. I was looking it's for. It's the poster child of what I always think <laughs> of is, is the Aaron Lovejoy 30 seconds a miniature. Yeah. Except it's down to like five seconds a miniature. Yeah, it it's takes five, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. Five. It's dude, literally dude. a brush stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it is monotonous. Um, I am committed on this to, in like terms of plan. hobby, to a buy one, paint one. I like your plan, man. I'm, st I'm going to follow your lead. Yeah. So I finished the box set and then I went, and when I bought my box set, I jump off the jump, broke the rule. But from here on out, it, like I, I've held to it so far, one box out, uh, but I bought a Thunderhawk and I was like, okay, the starter box is done. And now I'm going to do my Thunderhawk. And I built and painted my Thunderhawk and I went, and now I can buy something. I bought a box of Solarox infantry. They're primed, they're chopped, primed and assembled. 
when the, that infantry is done, um, I was able to work out for a second starter, which is something I want to talk about later. Nice. Um, yep. thank you. Yeah. yeah Craig and I worked what, out a what, uh, second oh, sweet. starter. Good. What, how did the Thunderhawk go together and, and what was it? Perfect piece of cake. Yeah. They're great. They, they, I am looking yeah. blown away by how easy the assembly has been. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is small pieces. It's, you know, um, if you're brand new, it, it, I could see this being very frustrating. Yeah. But for it, plastic kits, like I know what I'm going to do. I've got a set of tweezers for the parts that need tweezers. You need tweezers. <laughs> yeah. You need you know, tweezers for a few. You the know, smoke snacks, smoke stacks on the rhino side. I needed tweezers. I needed tweezers ones. for those and the, uh, the rocket launchers on the rhino. The, the sponsons. The, the, the little tiny one. The, oh, did you put on the, parts uh, of the, sponsons. the hunter killer? Yeah. Yeah. And then I popped one off and I was paying. Like, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> For the thun, for the for, for the rhino, the, the rhino oh. kit comes with little hunter, hunter killers, killers that are a millimeter. Yeah, uh, wow, they're like the size of the cigar. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, a, a Gundam set of the fine super pointy tweezers yeah. really worth. I mean, the reality is you can buy all in one, and they're usually under like Gundam kits, yeah. like yeah. that style thing. And you get an exacto blade, some sanding sticks, a really fine nose tweezer. That's what you need. That's what you need. Yeah. Um, I will say one thing I've done that has been really nice is so on the Ogryn for the solar auxilia, they're in five parts. There's legs and then a torso and then on arms on each side. What I do is I cut off the chunk of sprue. So there's two sets of feet on a chunk of sprue still. And then I just build the guy on, on that. Yeah. And then I literally glue the two sprues together. Oh, yeah. I sand that and just super cement plastic cement the two pieces of sprue. So I have a stick with all four Ogryn on it. Smart. Um, and I did that for some of the plasma gunners in the Marine sprue. So it was like, get likes with likes yeah. so that when I'm doing the, there's a few, OSL. when you get to the jump infantry, there are a couple of the jump infantry yeah, that like, are, there are like three sided surrounded on the sprue. So if you, I would clip off the jump pack, one of those pieces of sprue anchors to the jump pack. So if you clip that out to at least give you space for your paint to get in there and then you don't have to go and clean up something after you've uh already painted and done all your on sprue paint work um that's the one recommendation if you're gonna glue sprue to sprue like i'm doing to make bigger sprue sticks yeah uh, you don't need to do it for the the like five <laughs> bolt gun marines like don't no. bother but like the weird one-offs like the jump back guy and yeah um use your sanding stick or sandpaper sand it just a little bit it's like an old ceramics trick of yep. like you you Score burnish it. it and then put your your rubber your plastic cement on and give it a little rub you'll feel it it'll lock in tight almost like yeah. super glue yeah. it'll like oh and i'm not and it's literally that that burring it, it increases the melting and the scoring, scoring of it helps yeah it. and the, yeah you're just sanding sprue so you get a nice clean fit anyway uh and then also josh you mentioned this i think last episode um working on the 3d new new order tokens yeah um yeah realized i i did the combining all the pieces because i used the same file well you gave me the files um i found out lychee actually has a built-in if you go to pro there's a built-in combining option that i didn't know yeah. about to, so it's real easy there um didn't have to learn blender which i'm <laughs> trying to fight trying not to learn blender uh but yeah, I also messed up when I, when it comes to 3D printing and resin, the the like scary learning curve is more about learning the software than it is. I feel like there's less mechanical frustration with a resin printer than there is with a PLA printer, mm. but there's way more on the software end of figuring out how yeah. to position things. For sure. So I built a build plate and then realized if I had just done five separate builds of the tokens rather than one to one build that had everything. I did the same thing. I would have been way better off. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to have to print like 10 of these or I could print five of, okay, well scrap it and redo it. Yeah. So after I printed all mine, I was like, Oh, I need way more advanced orders and I think I'm good on everything else. So right. I now I need to do a second print run of just advanced orders. Yeah. So that's, I printed two and was like, stop time out. I'm going to have to do like 15 of this print <laughs> yeah. or I could do five and be done. So yeah, I got to go that route. Um, I think that's everything on Legions Imperialis. And then I mentioned I did a test model. Uh, my Iron Warrior Havocs for my combat patrol mm -hmm. um, reconnected with Cliff over in Santa Cruz. He's been slowly but steadily grinding away on the Marines as salamanders. Um, he just did some awesome freehand flames on, nice. on his salamanders. Awesome. Um, he was, that is one thing I can freehand. Yeah. Yeah. Flames. yeah. yeah. He was, it, was, it was his first time ever doing it. And he was like, well, those turned out pretty good. It's way super, better than that. Super easy. It, yeah. And he, he made them look great. Um, <laughs> so I did my Iron Warrior Havoc. 
uh, I am curious to see the, uh, what Dave paints is doing. Cause I have my own little system of how I do metals and the, the yeah. gold trim and we'll talk about it after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, got that all dialed in and it's, it's ready to go. So just now it's just a matter of, of the funny part was I didn't write down how I did the first batch. Mm. And so I was looking at the, the first, the iron words from, in your head. Now. Yeah. The <laughs> end of whenever I was doing them way back when, and I was like, what the heck did I do there? And then got through this test. Mall. I was like, Oh, uh, now I remember <laughs> this is not what I just did, but <clears throat> close enough. Cool. The muscle memory comes back. <laughs> yeah. But very, very excited to get back to, to slowly, but steadily chip it away and build out that combat patrol. Um, had hoped Adepticon would be my motivation, but turns out no, there's no there combat, no combat, combat patrol, patrol events. events. There was, Oh, interesting. surprisingly, very yeah. few other than the tournaments, lots of tournament options, mm -hmm. not much beyond that for 40 K, um, which was a little disappointing. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. weren't like kind of, there's, there's a the narrative event or? and there's, well, again, friendly tournament, competitive yeah. tournament, like, but there's not a narrative. There's not that I saw, not, not in this, is, yeah. I don't know. I, it would just would have been nice to see some smaller events. Yeah. So hopefully I will have my, I should should have my kill team or my combat patrol, excuse me, done by then. So I'll have it with me. Yeah. Um, just cause I think that's still for pickup games is yeah, tough yeah. to beat. Yeah. Um, but that's my goal is to have that, Our, uh, that combat patrol finished. Did you guys out. get into the, the, uh, space Hulk thing or what's going on there? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Did I, did I thought, I thought I saw one of you would reached out to the guy. I, I reached out to, uh, Troy yeah. and he does have a couple slots for Saturday, but not enough for the full group. So, ah. so well, yeah, we won't have a, so we won't have the, the full IC crew pod. there, but, um, there's potential for a second one. They're already, they have some friends from out of town coming and doing that. So they're already, already running, already that extra, running game. extra one. Yeah. So they had two slots. So, uh, me and Jody will sneak into that one unless, somebody like in our group that hasn't been able to play, I'll give my slot up to that. Like Craig, yeah. if somebody, yeah, same. if Craig hasn't, if he didn't get anything, I'll give yeah, him yeah. my slot. So yeah, that's, it, that's we were able to, event. it sounds like people were able to get in in bits and bobs, okay. but not that's like physical. Yeah. yeah. One big, yeah. one big gang. Um, a lot it's of become so popular. A lot of those were yeah. sold out before registration opened a couple of them just from uh, like Geek Nation tours gives you the early access. And I think a lot of people went right for that one. I think we yeah. should have shut up. About yeah. it. <laughs> Why did we do an episode on how awesome it is? <laughs> yeah. I need yeah. to get motivated to come back and work on my, my old Terminator's dad to my set. <laughs> Cause mm. every year it's been, I come so back good. and yeah. Immediately start painting up Terminators yeah. again. Terminators are fun to paint though. They are. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I like Terminators and Primaris. I think that's like just a, there's oh. something about that scale that I just, mm, it, it rocks for me. If I didn't already have like three or four squads for my Space Hulk set, because that's all I yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. They are like yeah. bespoke to play Space Hulk with. I would be very tempted to get those new Primaris ones. Those models are they're really nice. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. They, and they look scary on the table. And I like the new, I like the new Chaos Terminators. Terminators. Like they came out great. So. Did they scale those up as well? A little bit. Yeah. Not, not quite. As not much, as much, but, but yeah. yeah. Nice. They're, they're cool. bigger. Thank cool. Uh, I think that's me on hobby progress. Josh. Is, uh, yeah. yeah. Not to sound like a broken record here, but Legion of Legions and Perialis. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have my 2000 point list is fully painted, ready to go. Uh, and this is um, all the infantry, a ton of tanks, uh, a single Reaver Titan is in that. And then a couple of the planes I had from Imperials, uh, Aeronautica, that is. Um, I think I have three planes in a 2000 point list. And I think that's kind of the, the sweet spot of balance for, for me from, from the games that I've seen so far. Interesting. Obviously, I have like 11 planes, so I can bring more in later on. But I think I'll save those for bigger games. Um, I have a bunch of Eldar planes. Yeah. <laughs> You can still still play Aeronautica. You got orc planes now too. I know. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that that was my big push. Was so the Adepticon event is two thousand points, and just for any pickup games I go and play there, I would love to have um, just the two thousand point list ready to go. The stretch list there is an option to play three thousand points, which I don't think people being so new to the game are going to be able to have yeah. those large of games in the time frame given at Adepticon. We'll see how the next two months go for just getting repetitions in for games. Uh, Cause 3000 points is a, it's a big game. Yeah. It's, it's a full table. Um, but my, my stretch to get to 3000 points is I think it's like 10 infantry bases and nine tanks. So pretty, pretty small. And I'll definitely have that ready to go and I'll okay. take it just in case. But I, I think two, three, well, as we'll, we'll get into, I think 2000 points is kind of the sweet spot for, uh, okay. for the game. All right. Yeah. I got to get my, my two K dialed in and funny enough, it's going to have, as we'll, we'll also talk about, uh, it's going to have more to do with availability 
than yeah. what I air quotes want to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Be, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I might have to get that Titan done. <laughs> Weren't they just, it's close. uh, I thought I saw the boxes of Rhino or, um, predators were coming out and the uh, predators and Sakarin have been announced. I'm not sure when the release for those yeah. is happening for yeah. the sub. And that, that is the hardest thing to find right now. Yeah. Are those starter set tanks. So the Kratos are carrying everything on their back at the moment. Kratos yeah. carry a lot. On so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll we'll get into Kratos, but they're uh, they're they're awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, lots of legions Imperials being painted there. I've um, also been working on terrain. I'd already three D printed a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But now I have um, taken that and actually applied some some bases and added extra kind of rubbly goop onto those. And then um, in addition to that. Um, so we had a, a coarse gel medium applied onto the 3D prints and then onto, I just use a plastic hard base um, to just kind of build those up a little bit and give them more of a, a area terrain effect, but also just give it to make it look more like it's a destroyed building or rubble, things like that. Uh, as we'll get into it when we talk about the game more, um, types of terrain I think are also very important and having a varied type of terrain. So mm -hmm. it's not all just intact buildings and things like that. Like you want some, some area terrain, you want some ruins, you want some forests, things like that. Um, so been working on that and I'll have lots of, lots of, uh, terrain to paint, uh, up in the, the next uh, couple of weeks here. Uh, and then just a couple of quick purchases. I've got the, uh, the Taros Venator, which is the, uh, enforcer ash waste vehicle, the old, uh, uh, what with the Elysian drop yeah, yeah, Taros yeah, yeah. Uh, vehicle, which I've, I've always buggy. loved the look of that dune buggy. And I think in Ash Waste, it's super fitting. It's uh, I think it's a great looking model. I'm very excited to paint that as soon as I can get my hands on some of the um, Sanctioner uh, Enforcer Automata, yeah. uh, which is kind of the Enforcer specific Ambot style uh, dudes. I'm going to do Those that cool and the, uh, the Venator as a group. They just they've been out of stock for so long that. Um, I haven't been able to, to get my hands on them yet, but as soon as I do, I'll do those three models as a batch. And that's the end of that gang. That gang will be done and ready for the ash waste. All right. So very excited for that. And then lastly, I also did get the striking scorpions out of the new, uh, new box set, the kill nice. team box set. I just uh, split that with Craig and got the, uh, the scorpions out of it. So very nice. Very excited. How for many them. was that? It's 10 and it's enough to make That's two, good. Good uh, enough. two X arcs also. So you can either do it two squads of five or one big squad of 10. What are you doing? Two squads of five. I'll probably do two fives. Yeah. 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 Just because of the way they infiltrate How and they look out and they're gorgeous. Uh, they're all yeah. assembled. No, I haven't. Oh, they're okay. still on sprue, but oh, okay. I, I was definitely just <clears throat> pouring over that sprue, looking at it and like, that's, it's cool. Yeah. Ah, I'm so <laughs> excited. Those are in plastic. Yeah. Yeah. So I, at this point, I have everything I need for my elder list. I am hoping that we'll get plastic warp spiders when the codex drops. And yeah. that should be the only that thing I a, need. That would be that, amazing. That'll be kind of icing on the cake for me, but very excited to jump into that project. They could make sooner some than later, really but, cool looking warp spiders yeah, in plastic. Yeah. Too. Those are long overdue for an update. <laughs> I mean, when I just saw like LVO and they're like, oh, crew, you know, and I'm like, okay. But the elder still they're saving it. it for the codex i i think yeah, so they i are. think so and that's okay because there's not a lot like fire dragons and i don't think really need a change even if they if they put them in plastic they can look identical and be fine um swooping hawks uh if they just make those plastic and a little bit more like fine detail and kind of even a little bit more spindly when plastic would be cool and then warp spiders would be speaking of other units people don't warp use spiders no. hawks. yeah forever yeah. man they used yeah. to be great yeah yeah, yeah they was, had their there was a brief a window yeah mm -hmm. There was a time. Yeah, those those uh, warp spiders were old when you started. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. A it's lot hard of those to believe those. Me. Are those, I wonder shot. if those are the oldest <clears throat> right now. They, they might have be to be. up there. Might they be. have to be. Yeah. Man, we got ten of them painted already. So yeah. it's like uh, you know, whatever. and they still look pretty. I mean, they still, they look, still good, look good. But they're just metal and like yeah, <laughs> cut help. I yeah. definitely don't want them in fine cast and I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be released in plastic when the new cut extra. Nobody so. wants them in fine yeah. cast. Let's be honest. <laughs> Nobody well, wants blank fine cast. Especially any spindly stuff though. Like Eldar I, also in the, the, when I was the power Death blades. Guard, I was like, like fine cast looks fine. Yeah. I don't understand it's why people are big upset chunky about. stuff. Oh, yeah, I, see. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh oh, uh, okay. Very cool. Uh, games played. Let's launch into that. I haven't played any 40k recently. Keep Aaron keeps threatening to come over here and play his Grey Knight so he can prepare for Adepticon that he's in like the team tournament with Adon or the doubles or something with Adon. Oh yeah, he's, he's probably. <clears throat> I 
Chris, if he's doing the actual team tournament. No, it's the, not the four person team. The tournament. long war doubles. I think it's the long war doubles. What me and Cheyenne are also doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he keeps threatening to come over here and learn how to play them, and then, you know, not having time to come over and play them. So yep. you got a couple months. I'm ready to play. Uh, so I have not played anything, done a lot of board games. I will say I'm, I am waiting for, for the points drop, the uh, points update, which I think yeah. is, they're going to do some post LVO analysis I'm this sure. weekend. And then, so I that'll think, hit between January and March. And I think the update is supposed to come at the end of the month. So I'm thinking in the next two weeks we'll have points updates and that should lock everything in for Adepticon. So once we have that, I'm going to make my, my final list for 40. I'm so glad for I don't worry about that. I, I'll uh-huh. be honest. Like, so our last episode, you know, we had two great guests on to talk about how tournament play went. Yeah. And I was just like, it, it's so interesting how they're almost speaking a different language. Yes. And, and, and you're like, same game, very yeah, different. It's the same way game, it. just an extremely different way of playing it. Yeah. And, and more power to yeah. those people who play it that way. LVO is going on this coming weekend. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> you know, it's just not, I, I just, Yep. I have a hard time getting excited about that. Mm-hmm. It, it feels more stress inducing yeah. to me yeah. than exciting. Which isn't, so this is what I'm saying is that I actually have to wait for this tournament to happen because the results yeah. of that are going to affect the list that I'm taking in a friendly event to Adepticon in March, but yeah. points are going to be updated again until that. Yeah. So once this, this change will happen, then everything's locked in for the next three months or whatever, which yeah. will keep me covered. But it was like, oh, my list right now is that I really want to take is 15 points over, but I have a feeling in two weeks it's going to change and i don't really want to start painting anything until i have, sure. it, have it locked in and dialed so, yeah, yeah. years ago Which is weird makes yeah. sense or not that long ago i should say matt threw a phrase at me that i don't know that i'd really heard before apparently it's fairly common of, of a lifestyle hobby yeah that you got oh i have this lifestyle hobby where it's like the hobby is involved enough that it becomes a lifestyle and certainly 40k and, and games workshop games gaming under their umbrella it, they they have created a space where it can be a lifestyle hobby I think for me, wonder what that's, that's like, <laughs> I wonder what that's like, but the tournament gaming aspect yes. in and of itself, that for me was the, like, I just don't want to go there for that part of the hobby. Yeah. I don't want chasing the meta, which is, I feel like, unfortunately has negative connotations and I don't feel that way about it, but no. I don't want it. I don't want to. I don't want anybody to think I'm saying it in a negative way. Yeah, no, I it think that's is, important. Is right? that it's, it's fine. The, the tournament play and chasing the yep. meta and watch and the, on the points watch and that in and of itself, just that part becomes a lifestyle hobby. Yes. And that for me was it the like. It consumes a certain amount of your time right. for whatever hobby you're doing. Right. And that's it, a really interesting point. And it, as a, as somebody who is, you know, a, a poly hobbyist, that mm-hmm. like, I love my, we all love our board games. I love role my role playing games. games. Mm-hmm. I love my miniatures time. Yeah. Like I really love yeah. my miniatures time. I love my painting time. I like all the 3d printing. Like I, I can't justify being that dedicated to one facet of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, respect the heck out of, and, and love hearing from the people who really get it. And you know, what are the wound rates out of this unit versus this unit versus T4 versus T5 versus yeah, yeah. 10 wound or less versus like that level of thinking is like, it's fascinating, but I'm like, man, like, and in ninth edition and eighth and ninth, the, the stratagem game, I was like, man, the core game and the stratagem game that thankfully has been way dialed scale, back, yeah, dialed yeah, yeah. back. Significantly. it started feeling that way of like no yeah. just to play the game i have to do all this away the table um you know which is partly why i'm so high on combat patrol is 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 it it is not yeah. <laughs> like yeah, we have gone get you. arguably too far the other direction but yeah that that tournament mindset and and not even just the like playing your best game but then the meta chase is, right. is fascinating yeah. but also i'm like that's for me that is why it's like I just can't go there. It's, uh, it's just the same too reason, much of a lifestyle. It's the same me. reason Magic the Gathering doesn't appeal to yeah. me. It's the exact same reason. Like we played <clears throat> at Geekin that we did, we played the uh, 40K Magic the Gathering. And like I quickly became like, the last time I played Magic was 20 years ago. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. this is like a completely different game terminology. And I, and I just like in order for the amount of time I would have had to spend expend to catch up to where people were, I felt like, eh, I don't want to chase this down. You mm-hmm. know, I, I got other things I'd rather be doing. And and so, yeah, I think yeah. that's the, yeah, magic's a great but example I, of I, a but lifestyle I get, hobby. Look, my, my brother-in-law put himself through college playing magic gathering professionally. Right. Yeah. He, he, then he went on to work at Wizards of the Coast for a while. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, 
he ran a website about it. He talked about it all the time. And you know, your, his hobby became, it was a lifestyle hobby. Yeah. For yeah. And for some folks that's, that's amazing. And that's where the juice is at and yeah, yeah. enjoy yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah, and yeah. love what you love. Just <laughs> for me in my varied interests, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it was just, it, it really hit home for me after the interviews. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're speaking different. Yeah. Like we're, we're just enough that like I can speak just enough of what you, you're saying <laughs> that mm-hmm. I can. It's the same letters. But yeah. <laughs> well, the sentences are. I took totally Duolingo different. Spanish yeah. and I just, I do a lingo 40 K and I can just get <laughs> what you're just doing. track what you're going through. I'm going to jump in on games played yeah, because we're going to end at the get, same place. Let's get on. Um, so still playing lots of blitz bowl and RPGs, less blitz bowl because Matt and I are sharing a work life yeah. and uh so it's cut into the blitz bowl and the podcasting but still still love it still playing it still following it um see painting and hobbying like it's funny because like i'll come in and be like that's all the hobby i've done and i'm like no i've painted like a box of things and all this other stuff every on top team of it's ever been released well and for role-playing games like every yeah. month i'm painting up a whole bunch of new stuff so it's still always going on but for legions imperials josh you mentioned last time we played the two small games um i really want to hammer home of your first time learning the game go that route even though it's going to be like no it's going to be lopsided go, go be, which route the smaller game. smaller yeah. game. yeah um s- the alternating activation it will go doubly quick yeah. Um, which we'll talk about in a minute, but yeah, really, I encourage folks to, to fight the urge to go all in right Dip out. Dip your toe in. Yeah. Learn, <laughs> learn the basics. And I, I just, this is both me as a, as a gamer, but it's also me as a teacher going, yeah, there is literally education and learning theory around. It is better to learn a little bit and add on than try and learn all at once. Like yeah. that is not how we learn. Um, That's and certainly so, how I learned 10th ed 40 K. It was like, no, let's, let's play without, yeah, without, you know, stratagems and let's just, you know, okay. And then let's play. Right. That's, that's where I think the, uh, combat patrol. starter set for, um, for uh 40k back in fourth edition uh the battle from a crag battle from a crag did a great job of like walking you through and they have so they had all the missions in the book and they've gotten like better at it since the, then too yeah more on that later <laughs> i think they have <laughs> um yeah but that one was particularly good at like yeah. you have never seen one of these before you know and with all my blitz bowl playing and, and getting to do play testing like it is a product custom bespoke for you have never seen a miniature before how do we teach you how to do this? Yeah. Um, which is, can be tough for people who've played it for a long time Yeah, that, you know, and I think that's true of 40 K too, that like, Oh, well I've been playing 40 K for 20 plus years. So the new edition comes out. So I'm going to get out my 3000 point army and rock and roll. Nope. Fight that urge. Nope. <laughs> Just fight that urge. Do like it. play a small game. <clears throat> um, no way I would understand the solar auxilia if I, my first experience playing them had been a 3000 point game. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. The the because they play wildly different than the space. That's room. good they really to do. know yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So speaking of a 3000 point game. <laughs> <laughs> so after a couple small games, uh, we jumped into a, a very large 3,500 point game, wow. uh, team game. So me and Jody were on one side against uh, sky Ivan and Craig down at hair games last weekend. Um, which the no no better way to say it than it was an epic game like yeah. <laughs> in in all the levels all the ways all the puns um it was huge uh it was, we, it was a full four by six table most of the game yeah. standard size is uh, recommended at thir- three thousand points is the quote quote standard size so we were just slightly over that we played on a four by six instead of four by five um but we there was a ton of stuff um with alternating activations and I was gonna say, that's got a slow new players and yeah. that many players, uh, it was a slow game. Yeah, Definitely but, too big of a game for a team game that way, but it was still a lot of fun at the same time. And I would say like the team game is always fun for just hanging out with your buddies. And because mm-hmm. Legions Imperialis has mm-hmm. alternating activation, the team game is, is a tougher ask. Yeah. A team um, game in 40 K is slow enough as it is. Right. Cause there's so much back and forth discussion about what you're doing blah, blah, blah. with alternating activation. It's like a whole nother level, right? Because there is no stopping. No. So it creates stops <clears throat> that aren't there. Yeah. Whereas in a team game of, especially if you're comfortable playing team games of 40 K while you and your partner are taking a full turn, we can be talking about, okay, here's what exactly. We're and then when you it don't have that, turn, we just jump in. And in theory, yeah. you could go yeah. even when you get good at it, you can actually play faster because you're both moving all the things at once. Right. And, I mean, that that's a long time for you get there. <laughs> yeah. um, but 
Yeah, that is not the case with yeah. Legions Imperialis. In fact, I, I would I would be happy to play a <laughs> team game again. Absolutely. But, but that's I'd, not where its strength is. I wouldn't do it as a pickup game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would, for sure. Yeah, it would oh. be like, I'm going to go down to the shop and my day is going to be playing this we're, team game. We're going to make an event of if, it. If it yeah. was, because we walked in and it was like, let's learn and start the game. And I was, and we are like, let's play a team game. Sure, it sounds great. And a few hours in, I was like, oh, this was a bad We idea. literally <laughs> could have finished three or four games, three or four full games, yeah, had yeah. we not done this. How long do you, well, we'll talk about it in game. So anyway, go ahead. It, that all said, because that sounds kind of negative. Negative. It, it, it was super fun. It was super yeah. fun. Intensely enjoyable. Uh, some great moments. Yeah, <laughs> some really cool moments. I'd say the highlight of that game was probably the uh, the infantry completely surrounding a reaver titan and taking it down that's all, awesome barely but did which is uh a pretty cool thing and some just smart little tactical ploys i've definitely learned a lot in just the four games i've played now of little tactical things of what mm -hmm. like what you want to do like they had a unit of six kratos tanks which we'll get into these in more detail but kratos tanks are insanely good really good marine tanks they just have all the guns whatever they point out it's probably going to die um, how are they loading those out? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> those ones that kill everything. How are they loading Sponsons those out? Sponsons don't matter as much. Yeah. Point of some guns. point defense for taking out dudes is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but las cannons yeah. are going to be better against vehicles. Of course. Uh, cause heavy bolters can't hurt vehicles. Uh, I, the las cannons as the whole mounted weapons, I think are, is probably the way to go. Okay. Cause you, they're, they're accurate. So you get rerolls, you get two shots and they're very likely to hit. And then the big gun. The, it's a Kratos battle cannon. The, the, is that what it's called? The, yeah, I think it's battle. Cannon. I did two with the battle cannons and two with the. So the melts are really good too because they're one of the only things in the base game right now that can actually destroy buildings, which is mm -hmm. reliably. Of, which yeah, yeah with any kind guys of guys reliable. going into buildings, yeah. it's pretty helpful. Yeah. But even that we learned like deployment wise, <laughs> still where tough. where are the buildings and which ones are you going to want to blow up? Because yeah. if you didn't know, you can blow up buildings in Legions of Heroes. Mm -hmm. Um, which didn't happen, but doggone, I wish it would have, because really our day would have been did, very uh, different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there was a rhino rush right up the center and it just like was a spear right into the center of our line. And then it just blunted, blunted our advance yeah. the whole way. That's awesome. So that, that game, actually, the thing I learned the most out of that game is tactically how to deploy in certain ways of how you want just assets like deployed across the board, knowing what is going to happen throughout the course of a game. Um, and then some little counter tactics I was just alluding to, um, like they had a unit of six Kratos tanks. So whatever this unit was going to fire it is going to die. So I charged them with a unit of rhinos. One unit of six Kratos. Yes. Oof. Yeah. So I charged them with a unit of rhinos that had already dumped out my, my tactical <laughs> Marines on the objective. So these were just kind of like blunting, like hold them off. Yeah. But because their vehicles are the same scale, I was able to engage and pin them in. So they ended up using their activation to overwatch on my rhinos, which they ended up killing the rhinos, which is fine. But that means that unit of six Kratos isn't doing anything that right. turn, which was like, oh, okay, that was a, a just a cool kind of tactical thing to put together. Of like, I basically, these are a blade of rhinos at this point. They're, they're shield. Let me go. It's the rhino speed bump, not the rhino rush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let me throw them at the biggest unit that they have and just tie them up for a turn. Interesting. And it, Interesting. it worked well. So, yeah, yeah, our opening, I mean, our opening turn, we basically spent killing opposing rhinos because if we didn't, they were just going to be in the way. Yeah. Right. We had to get them out of the way. Yeah. Once and they, once they drop their guys off they're they're just a, yeah, they become a speed bump or a shield wall or something like Interesting. that. And, but they're, it's a cool, just tactical kind of thing that happened. So, yeah, they, I will say, and I don't know if this is getting too far out ahead of ourselves, but the way I really enjoy the way you end up talking about a game of legions Imperialis is very different than the way you would talk about a game of 40 K in 40 K I think, and mileage of course will vary but like you end up talking about units like oh and then my striking scorpions and then my blood letters and then your terminators that's kind of the conversation of a game is what did these units do versus these i find when i'm thinking about and talking about legions imperialis even during the game it's now on this flank yeah okay now totally down the agree. center <laughs> now what is our counter going like you're thinking it's not quite but like at a moving up towards a strategic level mm -hmm. instead of little tactical, you know, then these guys, it's not about, it's, it's really about the battle battlefield line. overview versus unit to unit. To yeah. Unit. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it's neat that it creates that difference. Yeah. Of, I was going to say, I think it accomplishes a, what it set out to do. Yeah, a battlefield view. And, yeah. and as we'll get into here right about now, the old versions had that as well. Yeah. 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 All right.
All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break then we're going to come back. We're going to start talking about Legion, not necessarily Legion Imperialis, but Epic and Epic Armageddon and kind of where Legion's Imperial, Imperialis got its start. So we'll be right back. Hey, we're back again. Here we are. Yeah, yeah we are. Awesome. So we're going to, uh, before we start talking about Legion's Imperialis more than we already have, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about where it kind of came from because uh, the games that it originated from, the, the thinking and the, it's really another iteration of, of one of these games several games yeah <clears throat> i should say uh i was just not interested in uh when i was first looking at miniature wargaming and it was quite frankly just not where i could spend my money you know i was looking at the fantasy stuff because i was a big dungeons and dragons player right yep i think i played one game of warhammer Forty Thousand with some friends at the time but it was like second second edition um and it just I didn't have the stuff. I didn't really know. I was like, eh, you know, it's something to kill an afternoon. We were just goofing off. Uh, so I would look at the cost of things. I'd be like, ah, this is you, you want how much for skeletons? And they're plastic. You know, at the time, like we were all right, buying. Right. I forgot about yeah. that. And, and, and you remember locally, there was a shop called D and J hobby. Yep. Okay. And, and man, back in the day, like it was amazing. This was all before, miniatures just weren't as prevalent as they are now and you would go and they would have all these reaper miniatures in a cabinet and there was like one miniature per little section you had a number under the miniature and okay i want that one you write down the number Mm -hmm. okay and i want this one and you could actually look at it It was it was that was for a nerd growing up in the 70s 80s playing dungeons and dragons that was like the pinnacle of, oh my gosh, I would really like to do this. And I remember when I came back from the military and I was still playing D and D like, and I was making, you know, okay, money. I had some money to spend and I went to D and J and I bought like 50, 60 miniatures from the nice, yeah. cabinet. And I was just like, it was so exciting. None of them were ever painted <laughs> back then. No, it wasn't uh, like a, a, a norm. Yeah. And so, I, that was the first time I saw kind of like Adeptus Titanicus. Um, or I think it was just called Titanicus at the time. It was still Adeptus Titanicus. It was still yeah. Adeptus Titanicus yeah. and Epic Armageddon at the time. And I would see these boxes and I'd be like, yeah, this is just not my cup of tea. It's like not what I'm doing at the moment. I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons, Cyberpunk, Call of Cthulhu, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Uh, so to delve into this for me was kind of interesting. Now the two of you both played many of these games. So we will talk about that. Yeah. But let's start about like first edition. It's kind of released in, there's two rule sets that come out Adeptus Titanicus and space Marine. Um, And these combined kind of make what we would think of as epic at the time. Um, did you play first edition? Did you either play first edition Adeptus Titanicus? I did. Yeah, you did. Yep. And, um, so that first set came with like six plastic Titan models. Yeah. All warlords. They're teeny tiny. These things are probably two and a half inches tall, but they don't look like the warlords. No, we now com- they look like the, uh, they look turtles closer to reavers. So yeah. 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 And, um, and, and space Marine included, Oh, and the other thing it had was styrofoam buildings yep. and space Marine came with folded cardstock buildings and styrene roofs al- alongside sprues of infantry and vehicles. Yeah. But you only were playing the Adeptus Titanicus piece of this. Yeah. For, so I played Adeptus Titanicus and then, uh, as we'll get into shortly after they came out with Titan legions, mm-hmm. which started kind of, I think blurring the lines a bit more of space Marine and Titanicus okay. together. Okay. So that was second edition. Yeah. So the right. first one was 1989 yeah. and it's so funny. I, I, I kind of place everything in terms of like, here's when I graduated high school, here's Same. when I was got out of the army. 1989, I'm, I'm out of high school. Like I graduated 88. That tells you how old I am. 53, <laughs> 88, 89. I'm in the army. So none of this is even on my radar at yeah. that point. Uh, I come back from the military in 92. Um, so this is when I start to see 
second edition of the two rule sets again space marine and titan legions yeah right and now you say this is where it's kind of blurring the line yeah so titan legions introduce more of the smaller things not just it <laughs> some of the bigger things too like the uh imperator titan and the giant that's Gargans. what was notable okay. for yeah. was the uh the imperator titan so but i it, came in on space marine second edition yeah that's when i got in was okay. 91 because same sort of thinking this was mid high school for me. And this was when I really went like really attached to GW, GW was okay. very early nineties. Um, and it's funny cause I remember Titan Legion coming out right as I was getting out of high school and, and being like, eh, neat, but I'm kind of moving <laughs> on to other things. things. Yeah. So let's just quickly space Marine box game included three armies. Uh, -huh. that's yes. kind of unique space Marines with their land Raiders, uh, and, and rhinos, uh, orcs with their battle wagons and Eldar with their Falcon grav tanks. Yep. Uh, Titan legions was notable, as you said, for introducing the, uh, Imperator class or Imperial Emperor class Imperator Titan and the orc mega guard, mega gargant and knights, the first appearance of knights in miniature form. Yeah. No. yeah. 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 Plastics. Uh, it also Plastics. contained Imperial in Knights. Said they had them as metal. Yes. Yeah. Imperial Knights and 12 orc battle wagons. Yeah. That were like totally customizable. Yeah. Like you could change out. You can actually snap on, on the, and the, they all had death rollers and or not. Oh, that's or the, cool. Like yeah. kill dozers or. Yeah. yeah. So a really that's cool, cool kit. That okay. So, kit. um, so you're playing this, this time, but you're kind of leaning out of it. Uh, the, Jody, you're leaning out of it. Josh, so Titan right? legions. Yeah. Were you playing Titan legions yeah. still? Yeah. Okay. Still. So I had had my, my, like, I really got into space Marine second edition okay. because there were a bunch of supplements that's they made this. for it. Okay. Um, and yeah, this, this was, it, and funny enough, it had to do with similarly a financial thing because you would buy a, you could buy box sets and it would say like space Marine Legion and yeah. it, and they advertised like over 150 models in the box, which is what they do now. Right. 120 yeah. models. But yeah. it was like okay. at the time it was like 20 bucks. <laughs> this big. Yeah. So I, as a high school kid, I was like, man, I don't have, and I kept seeing these little boxes and I was like, this actually looks kind of cool. So I saved up and I bought the starter and fell in love with the rules. Yeah. Interesting. Like I remember that's what actually hooked me was I was like, it seemed like a better value, like bang for my buck. Sure. And then read the rules and was like, just fell in love with that rule system. Um, that was second edition. And it, like I said, time-wise, I probably would have kept playing Titan legions when they scaled up. Cause I actually really liked those Titan rules yeah. where you had data cards and yep. you rolled these goofy dice was, on them. It was to see crunchy. Where you hit them. It was neat. Um, <laughs> But like I said, I was graduating high school and like so many people, you graduate high school and either fall away from it. Right. Or, and for me, it's just, I just redesigned like where I was spending my who hobby were time. You, who were you playing with? So I was up in, this is, was up in NorCal. Yeah. Um, this was before Anthony and I started hanging out a lot. We knew each other from school, but we didn't, I actually don't think we knew each other were gamers um, until right after he graduated. So it was just before that. Um, and it was just guys at the local game shop. Okay. And I was the guy who like bought it, painted up both sides. And then would be like, Hey, let me show you this yeah. really cool game. Yep. Look and then you. found a couple other folks that would play it with me and they got into it too. So it was so just you kind of drove that yeah. game group. That's always been my like MO. little yeah. niches. I'm like, if I think this game's cool, that means I'm painting two factions. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I've always done that. I, it's, you know, Jody GM is a brain. gateway drug. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And what about you? Who are you playing with Josh? Primarily my older brother. Um, there was a local shop that had a couple people also playing there. Um, and then I also got a couple of good friends into it, introduced okay. them to the hobby. And, uh, especially when the box set, the space Marine second edition dropped and it had three armies. Um, I was mostly playing Eldar for, for that uh, Eldar and Marines. And then my brother was mostly playing the orcs. Um, and so for both of you, was it, you picked up the rule set and learned it yourself or did somebody else played with it? Cause a lot of times like Adeptus Titanicus, uh, the current version, uh, Josh, you, I read the rules and I've said famously, infamously many times, uh, they read like stereo instructions. Yeah. Uh, but once I played the game and you kind of walked me through, I was like, Oh, got it. Super, super easy. Right. Yep. Um, but you kind of picked it up, learned it yourself. And yeah. So my, uh, my brother, because my, um, uh, my childhood friend worked for chaosium, he was in the publishing industry right. for role-playing games. Right. Uh, my brother being a couple years older than me used to go with him to Gen Con almost 
or at least a couple times, not, not every year, but, um, he, he went several times and my brother would always bring cool stuff back that he found at Gen Con, mostly miniature related. So that's where he picked up Titanicus. That's where he picked up Titan legions. Um, and then he and I would kind of figure it out and play together. Okay. Okay. After the fact. So yeah, I learned it. I, this is the first GW game I remember like really teaching myself because I had to have other dudes at the shop teach me 40 K at this time. Yeah. But I like yeah. picked this up and was like, this totally makes sense. I get it. And the one thing that I'd forgotten, frankly, until we're talking right now, I was able to get people who wouldn't play 40 K or other games. They would play this and, and enjoyed it. Interesting. Um, it, you know, not to, it, it doesn't play like any other GW game. Right. It is noticeably right. different. Yes. Um, you know, and, it's, it's just and yeah, very, and it's also the old rules and the current ones. If you have that lens, there's a tactile way to you interact with building an army and how things resolve. Mm-hmm. That's way less intimidating. Interesting. So, okay. Okay. So 1997 rolls around. Um, I'm five years out of the military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I think I'm living in Southern California. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in Southern California at this point. Uh, so I'm kind of out of... Just rollerblading your way through life. I, I, that's right. Like like Ken. <laughs> um, Straight up I beach actually, volleyball. I actually... <laughs> <laughs> this was supposed to be volleyball. Uh, I... Yeah, at this point, I'd kind of fallen out of the hobby a little bit. Um, I, I had... It wasn't even role-playing for a couple of years. I wasn't even role-playing. And then when I came back, I got super into it. So... Um, this is though this is now released as epic 40,000. Yeah. yeah. And I uh, play it, a ton of It's this. kind <laughs> of it's it's not two separate systems combined anymore. This is the first time it's kind of put together. Yeah. But it's only supported for like 6 months. It's not successful for Games Workshop. Um you know, that's funny cuz I I was just playing this um and I would, you know, get miniatures. I played this for years. And didn't even realize at the time that it wasn't supported until I was reading your notes on this yeah. today. I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, it, uh, it wasn't supported. I like it for six years. months. Yeah. There were models that they had planned to do that yeah. never got made as a result of it. But designed by Jervis Johnson, yep. Andy Chambers, um, who both uh, maintained that it's the best rule set they had ever conceived. And I, I heard very good things about the rule set. I did not play it. You're shaking your head. <laughs> this, this, like... This was the end of 40 of Epic for me. Like I did not like this rule set. Interesting. Um, Part of it. And this will resonate, I think with a lot of 40 K players of a certain era of the base has changed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's Um, a note in here. This isn't just, we needed a base ring. It was, you went from a square to a rectangle. And then this is when they introduced the suppression markers. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot more blast markers and and it just, change the order it changed and, yeah. like the changed game fundamentally changed like so it it's kind of like going from warhammer fantasy to age of sigmar yeah i mean like that's a it, it was i would change. say that's a yeah, a yeah maybe not quite but similar ver- that level of change yeah. yeah um and it was you, you kind of needed a new army you didn't mm-hmm. there were conversion rules for how to use the old with the new but but it really was yeah. written for these different style bases and the old vehicles now had new versions and yeah. um yeah it it totally lost me i and I, this is also when i was starting to play a lot of 40k this is, is when like anthony and i had really met right. and we're hitting it off we we're also playing it's just interesting how battle then. we all kind of weave in and out through different yeah. things at different times right yeah but because- i remember this being so foreign that i was like i'm just not interested read the rules read like stereo instructions and i was like i'm 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 out it's so interesting that the writers can feel like this is the best set we've ever made it's not for everybody right yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's well i mean fair of any game <laughs> i think that's fair of any game yeah. right yeah I, oh my god you guys are disagreeing hang on <laughs> josh I played so much of this, this game how did garbage. you not love it jody you're wrong <laughs> no you're wrong i didn't play first edition space marine but i played everything after that <laughs> uh actually i did not play armageddon Okay. That was, that was, which is next. Yeah. Yeah. 2003 referred to it as Epic Armageddon. It's, it's also referred to as Epic Armageddon. Um, and it's so funny that every time we talk about these games, we always talk about them as Epic, but Mm -hmm. it it really wasn't until this point that it was kind of Epic 40,000, but I think they called them Epic scale. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, so unlike previous editions of this game, uh, other games produced by games workshop, um, this was kind of like, there was like an open 
trial period where they were sourcing the rules and getting feedback and all that. Hmm. <laughs> what was that called? That whole era had a name. It was like Fanatic. This oh, is really? like, um, there was, yeah. Oh yeah. You could be like, you could be, uh, and they were putting out annual magazines yes. and yeah. Mordheim got caught up in this a little bit. Yep. Um, so and you had fifth, like fifth edition blood bowl. You had like champions this. of it that would, yeah. Like, uh, th not in game, like people who were champions of the hobby were going out and trying to, yeah. And there would be net forums where the, the oh, actual, yeah, had actual uh, rogue traders, like going yeah. to shops yes. and promoting yeah. new releases and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the core game rules needed to play Epic Armageddon were included in the set as well as lists for space Marines, Imperial guard and orcs. And there was a second rule book released for this fourth edition of it called Epic sword wind. And this contained army lists for Biltan Eldar, uh, the Baron siege masters, whatever the heck those are, uh, Imperial guard army and uh, warlord snaga snaga's feral orc horde. <laughs> Um, so there was a huge number of, of armies that were playable in quote unquote epic, which orcs, feral orcs, speed freak orcs is different factions, but Eldar chaos, space Marines, chaos, mortals, the lost in the damned Tau. Um, and then what happened, which we've seen happen with other systems in particular, Battlefleet Gothic, we've seen this with is the community kept going with this yeah. once games workshop kind of abandon this the community continued to work on it and oh was that more time was the other one we've seen mm -hmm. this yeah. done with um and adeptus mechanicus uh necrons tyranids tau imperial guard death court krieg all those things become added as like this net ea group this mm -hmm. group that's working on kind of adding additional things i don't know how successful that particular thing is or was like i don't think i don't know if you know josh you'd be the only i don't you know. know for tom I, may know i didn't i didn't play armageddon at all because that was my post high school i was in college doing all that college stuff then meeting uh, girls and meet, meeting girls and drinking <laughs> <laughs> all, all those fun things um so i wasn't i wasn't playing then but uh blood bowl i think is the best comparison for the fans carrying that oh, forward and that, yeah, that was, was wildly thinking. successful yeah i mean brentonians stuff. are in one of the video games and they were one of these teams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the corn demon team exists in the video games. It's never, there's never there's been an never actual been DW demon. team, but there were net ones. Um, and I will say of this for many years still existed as an internet entity. Um, it's referred to as net Epic gold. <clears throat> if you go, oh, is it? Yeah. If you go look up net Epic, it is completely fan done and it is the continuation of this evolution of these rules um, and much like legions imperialis uh, a design choice was made by that community to go backwards in terms of rule systems okay they didn't go forwards so um, but yeah, because Epic Armageddon is a lot more like Apocalypse in how it plays, right? It's much more simplified. You have the blast tokens, the way wounds are dealt with. From, mm -hmm. I, I haven't played it personally, but from from what I hear, yeah, yeah, it was much. And more, we did play uh, Apocalypse, the new Apocalypse, the new Apocalypse, system, yeah. which. <laughs> clearly got inspiration from that um so in fact one of my theories is that apocalypse clearly got abandoned like it came out and then that's it you don't really hear that was it. how you it's do it. not supported anymore yeah. um which is unfortunate because i think it was really fun but i think financially for games workshop like, that's not where the play is at that's not where people are really playing the game um, occasionally it's fun to do, yeah. but it's not like every game you're going to bust out apocalypse. That's not so where new players are going for. Yeah, and they, they want that new player money. Yeah. And so I'm sure, and most people, most people are not like us. They don't have collections of this size and scope that you could be like, I'm going to field an apocalypse army. Right. Now I know yeah. people listening to this right now are like, well, I have an army like that. You welcome to the club. Yeah. Like you are the shameful unique person that we are <laughs> that has, hey. has spent too much on this damn hobby but th the reality is like it, it just isn't isn't where the money is and what's funny and i know we're diverging slightly here but what's funny is i remember when apocalypse first came out fourth fifth fourth edition like they really did a huge push for that and they were selling like loads of models because you'd buy like this kit has three rhinos and this kit has three vindicators and you know yeah 
and you'd get them at a discount right because yeah. you were buying them in bulk and man we were just going that's why there's a bane blade and a stampa that's why there's a bane <laughs> blade and a stampa um but my going back to my original point was uh apocalypse definitely took inspiration from this yeah the way you would place wound markers on units wounds were not final tallied till the end of the round so at least your guys got a chance to shoot before they got wiped out um and and i have to say like it made me appreciate the this smaller game epic yeah having played that at a larger scale and gone oh i see wow that's a really clever way of handling that and I think we'll bring this back with Legion's Perials too, but there was actually a lot of really smart game design and modern game design 30 years ago, which is an interesting thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the question would be much like Battlefleet Gothic. When, when we, when we did a show on Battlefleet Gothic many years ago, Justin and Chris and other guys would be like, Oh, that game's the best. Battlefleet Gothic is the best. If you listen to, it's the greatest game Games Workshop has ever come out with. If you play Battlefleet Gothic now, bless you. <laughs> it is. Um, it's Jody's favorite game. It's the only GW game I will not play. Oh, I didn't know, know this. I, 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 if you walk up and you're like, I have all the stuff, I have all the rules. You're like, no. let's play. I'll say no, thank you. Why is that? It's terrible rules. Yeah, they're it bad. Is. They're, they're object. It, like I can say pointing to objective things. It, this is an incredibly dated style of rules writing. Yes, it is. That is frankly, we know better ways to do this. Yes, now. roll yes, dice. And this to is roll what dice I said. To roll dice when, to see if something happens, maybe. When we yeah. played the, too that, many that game, yeah. it was, it was. I was like, this is boy, this is clunky, and this is. And then I played a game like Firestorm Armada, and I was like, oh. Oh yeah, they're definitely better fleet games. Like I, this is super. I still smooth. enjoy Battlefleet Gothic. It's still fun, but there are definitely better fleet games out there. I would love to see Battlefleet Gothic get like a modernization yeah. of rules of yep. thinking, like Titanicus. They use a terminal system like Titanicus oh, that gets fun. rid of all your critical hit charts, and you just have structure points right there with locations right there. and shields, and you're, you're done. Like yeah. so, my favorite the game's already better. Point to make about Battlefleet Gothic, and I will say this in the context of let's talking about legions imperialis yes you walk up and you see a game a battlefleet gothic set up and you watch the people at the table leave come back at the mid game yes look at what's the people at the table look at what's on the table leave come back at the end of the game there will be a minimal difference and the interaction that the people are having will look exactly the same i agree with you there I will be no you. change damn it i don't want to agree with you the board state <laughs> I mean, you're wrong is like yes the board state has changed yes but unless you are actively the one playing, it is changed minimally. And yeah, visually, yeah. it's not telling you anything. No. Like the, the story just isn't there. Do you need more torpedoes? I will tell you this, and this has been, you know, you asked in the notes about what appeals to us about original Epic, and, and I'd say now as well, is that is not the case. Like, okay. it is an incredibly dynamic game. Yeah. 40K is a very dynamic game. They've yeah. gone to great lengths rules-wise to make it a more, like, what's going on on the table is... Uh. I will say for Battlefleet Gothic, the Eldar notwithstanding, yep. yeah. <laughs> but that's also incredibly problematic within the game. Yes. Yeah. Um, to and, the, I, and I didn't mean to go on a Battlefleet no. Gothic route, but my my you actually hit my point earlier, which is, are, why are you not playing aside Legion of Paris aside? Why were you not playing Epic anymore? Are did the rules become dated, or did it just die out because things die out and and you know, or you couldn't find people to play with, or what was it that stopped you from playing this game? For me, it was, I, I got way more deeply into second edition 40 K okay. and I think it was fifth edition Warhammer fantasy battles at the time. And there was just way more people to play with. Yeah. It was a okay. much bigger scene, more variety. Um, and at that time, the game went in a little bit more, like second edition 40k was very different from what 40k looks like now uh just more depth more crunch to it with and but still not a lot of models really it was kind of played at a skirmish scale you right know, like 15 models in a standard game or whatever of second edition um and also i, I was <laughs> i was a broke kid so price point yeah. was like yeah. I, I could get a lot of games in i didn't need a lot of models and i uh. could just go to go to town on and uh progress my hobby further also from a printing standpoint like just way more detail and things to got it to deal with at that scale versus the the old epic we should say was six millimeter scale so teeny teeny tiny 
rough sex even minutes. smaller <laughs> even oh, yeah. smaller substantially this is the first time i've painted something this small yeah. so for me it's like good God. and my eyes are older now and so it's like uh, that's funny i look at these marines and i'm like they're huge <laughs> and they're mad they're, they're guys so big so funny. so i used to when i was painting epic this is way back when but uh i would just have them all lined up and my mom would call them bugs like you're painting your bugs and i wasn't playing tyranids or anything it's <laughs> yeah, just like not it's bugs like, mom space marines at that scale like kind of look like a ladybug or something because yeah, yeah. it's just a couple dots of color and that's it so yeah, yeah. my mom used to be like you're gonna ruin your eyes oh my <laughs> God. I'll, I'll stare at the TV. Speaking of old eyes, I just got my <laughs> driver's license renewed uh, and I had to go take like the vision test. It was the first time I've ever taken my glasses off and been able to read the thing because I got the LASIK surgery oh, many oh, years yeah, ago. Nice. Now I just wear these primarily for reading, but it has impacted my painting and yeah. my, but, like my eyes get tired painting way faster than they used to. Like, uh, yeah, I used to joke with my buddies, God, I hope I get nearsighted. I am. It's right. the worst. <laughs> See it. It's crystal clear right here. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, a little blurry. I, I, I'm, I am nearsighted. Like I was so nearsighted, it was debilitating and, and LASIK. Yeah. Thankfully for They're now, like, do you want us to fix one nearsighted or one? No, no. No, no, no. Just get rid of the near side. I will wear reading glasses anyway. Um, so yeah, I, the reason I brought up the battlefleet Gothic was about the dated rules because you nailed it. Cause I felt the same way. Yeah. Like everybody spoke and I'm like, you guys are looking at this rose colored glasses Big or something time. Yes. because this game does not play smoothly. Um, I, I would love to see them updated. Yeah. Like, but I, I don't know of any fleet games I've ever, like you hit on some interesting points too about, you come back to the table and you're like, okay, it's Nothing's still, still kind of looks the same. Uh, Firestorm Armada, there was a little more movement and stuff, but likewise, like, I don't think you see a lot because yeah. capital ships take a lot of damage. So they're still there on the table, blah, blah, blah. You know, Brian got really into drop zone commander for a yeah. hot minute because, but again, it created that dynamic board. I played state. one game of it. It yeah. was, it yeah. was pretty interesting. Yeah. Brian and I played drop fleet commander, which is one of the best fleet based games I've also played. Um, and then also, also uh, terrible. Sad, all these also dead terrible games. at fleet games, by the way. But th that was interesting because it's not like just deep space fleet game. It is yeah. low orbit yeah. fleet game. So you're ac actually interacting with a planet. You're dropping troops off on sites yeah, and then yeah. there's weapon systems and like, I don't know, it was just, it was a, a really neat rule set and yeah. super fun. But. Funny so, enough, my, do you ask like, why, why did you break from it? Um, for you Epic Armageddon, you already said. Yeah, like, it was Epic Armageddon. And it, it's funny with the old world returning yeah. now, right now, it's very similar of like, I don't know that I want to go back uh -huh. um like i have my old fantasy armies on square bases i didn't light mine on fire i kept it um, smart i thought it was neat um and i'm like yeah i could just buy an adapter tray i don't i don't know like there, it's weird how not excited i am to go back travis is like super excited it's about funny it. to me how because legions imperialis is in many ways Scratching going it. back to the game i started with uh -huh. It is very similar to Space Marine Second Edition. <laughs> yeah, like very. Um, it it doesn't feel like as big of an ask, and enough time's gone by that it feels like it is something entirely new. Yeah. It's not having to re rack something I already have. Understood. Which is really unpleasant. Like, I mean, ultimately, if I had to say, why did you get rid of your orcs? It was the rebasing. I mean, because mm -hmm. we're talking about it's a lot. hundreds. <laughs> That's a lot of and hundreds of rebasing models. And then by the time I was done with that, I was like, I don't enjoy this anymore. Like the joy has been pulled away from it because I'm just re-racking something I already have. Right. It, you're not progressing yeah. forward. There's, there's no payoff. There's there, a, right. that way you can play it. There's a step rest. back. And until step now, forward. yeah, that's what Epic would have always felt like. But now it feels like it's been long enough. It's been a big enough gap that it's coming. It's going forward to Fresh something again. new. I enjoy it's re it's coming back i and mean it's, it, it's coming back but without having to regress and all new miniatures that and are way oh, better than the so original ones ever were and yeah yeah and it's not like i'm replacing things i already have that i'm like oh could somebody in our group i think it was tom asked about like oh could we you can't really use the old models here oh can like, you, you not yeah it, i don't know what would, the, like i remember aaron had a huge collection of space marines that he bought at uh game castle flea market and then I think he gave them to Tom. So I'm sure that's some of what Tom's and I, man, I, I mean, I'd be, I don't want to tell anybody you can't play, play however you want to play, of course, but it's not going to rack it's, up. It's not yeah. going to look right. It there's yeah. some serious scale difference. It, yeah. It's going to six it's, millimeter to eight millimeter. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 25%. Like that is a big scale difference. If you're trying to play 40 K with new modern stuff and your buddy still has RTBO one rogue trader Marines, 
It just yeah. doesn't feel right. It's going to look, I get you. it's going to be weird. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to create some issues as you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially, I think Tom has the uh, rectangular bases too, does. instead of the he squares, does. which is even, yeah. even more varied. Now they're round. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I don't, I, so it's, I, I like that idea of like, it feels like you're progressing, not you're, you're regressing or, or just retreading for right. the sake of, cause the company said so. Yeah. 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 I mean the, the base shift thing was a huge thing for people. Now it's not even talked about. Right. You know, which is interesting. Like that 32 mil, 28 to 32 mil right. base. Well, as you've said a bunch, they look better. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> I hate it, but they do. Yeah. I mean, like I look at the old ones, I'm like, eh, they, I have a bunch of them for the Minotaurs. I'm yeah. never, never going to rebase those guys. Are you kidding me? You got a resin <laughs> printer, make some rings. Yeah. Just or print, not. Print new bases. They're or all not. old Marines. I do. I don't want to do them anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm sticking with chaos. I love it. There we go. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that kind of solidify why you kind of stepped away from it um we all know why josh got into this and and dragged <laughs> i really wasn't gonna do this i was like i'm not doing no it. you were going to i wasn't yeah you were but i had so much fun with titanicus with you it was, was like uh, it's gonna... <laughs> you didn't think you were i knew you would did you really yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate being that predictable. <laughs> it's a great game. Do you, you don't like games? You're gonna I love this is is predictable. I wasn't. I wasn't super into Titanicus, and then I played with Josh. I'm like, God, man, it's a right, great Josh, game. How, what else? You called me a pusher earlier. What else do I got? <laughs> I'm an eight millimeter pusher. <laughs> yeah. You're the gateway drug. <laughs> Moving on. These will fit up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. They're pretty anyway. snortable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it, but they <laughs> yeah, not for small children. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, so let's do this. Um, that's kind of the history of, of where this ultimately came from. I, I look, I don't think we would have Legion Imperialis if you didn't have these games. No, yeah, right. I agreed. Um, and, and what we'll talk about next, we're going to, we're going to take a short break and then we'll come back and we're going to talk about Legion Imperialis, where it kind of sits in the, lexicon of of warhammer games out there now and then uh maybe a bit more about rules and what appeals to you uh what doesn't and um and models obviously so we'll be right back all right we're back we're talking uh legions imperialis now yeah we moved on from the past we're sort stepping of it, stepping into the <laughs> back to the future. historical future it really is. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> what, Jeff and I used to call it future history. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Legions Imperialis has released in 2023 uh, to, to sell out kits. I mean, there's a crazy amount of, of material that came out and sold out immediately yep um came back in stock <clears throat> sold out immediately again which don't get me started on the hardback siege of terra <laughs> oh congratulations <laughs> yeah. i'll just uh, cheyenne bailed me out yep like cheyenne bailed me out because i was yep like, that q system yep anyway legions of Imperial. legions imperialis <laughs> which also takes place in 30k <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so it has come out um now unlike its grandfather systems is set in the Horus Heresy universe. Correct. 30,000. Yeah. And well, the first one was too. Was it? The third, well, the Horus Heresy was designed for Epic. Oh, Adeptus Titanicus. Right. And that's where the blurb came out yeah, actually yeah. about. Is in Adeptus The Titanicus. Warlord Titans were the reason Adeptus Titanicus um, kicked off the Horus heresy because they only had enough models to do one. How interesting one, um, tooling of, so it was two, two separate colors of the Beetleback Whirler Titans. Makes sense. Let's make a, make and a again, civil war. I think this is why this has been approached this direction, yeah. right? Like, uh, if we were to try to field all of the force the 20 something factions of 40 K right. into yeah. a, a new, tooled game like it's cost prohibitive yeah like there's just yeah. no way right. and the minute you do orcs versus space marines people are like whoa what about eldar what about necrons what about chaos Tyranids? what about chaos. x anything yeah yeah I every mean, every faction it's um yeah i mean it, i remember john french talking to me about uh primarchs fighting right or um revealing uh who was it guy haley was talking about revealing 
uh, where the Legion of the Damned originate from. And he's like, if you answer that question, 90% of the people are going to be upset with the answer. Okay. Can't yeah. unring the bell. Right. Because it, it, not that he even knows what the answer is, but if we definitively come out and say, well, there are blood angels who are damned by blah, 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 you know, I, then everybody else is going to be like, well, that's not how I see it, yeah. you know? And so no matter what, if they had launched this in 40 K as a Eldar versus thing or a orc versus thing, the other factions are going to be upset. Yeah. Yep. You have to do all of them or do none of them. <laughs> so to yeah. that end, I think they were smart about what they did decide to go with. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. You got space Marines and your solar auxilia and which is great. And you got two flavors of loyalist and trader. Oh man. Release Mechanicum. Probably will. Oh. I mean, cause that's the two other 30 K factions would be Mechanicum demons and, and demons. demons. Yeah. yeah. Mechanicum would be cool. Maybe I could get a guy on stilts. <laughs> uh, it didn't exist in 30k so. oh right my bad <laughs> still sorry uh, 10, years of uh, r d it would be fascinating <laughs> it, I, I, it, it all depends on how popular it is and how yeah. how sustainable it is right right i mean clearly initially the, the rate initial, that it's selling out i'm hoping that gives it legs the initial drop yeah. is yeah. sold out i don't know what the run was nobody ever knows but i mean they had to have anticipated good sales but it sold out incredibly fast yeah um I was lucky to piecemeal together what I got and, and, you know, I actively chose not to do the, the starter box, um, for, and there's, there's, for reasons, better or worse. there's reasons to do that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, but so it's released in 2023. It's, it's, it's more of it is coming out in 2024. It was delayed yeah, because they need to go back and reprint some missions that had some problematic titles or, or whatnot, which I, I actually, I totally appreciate the move there. Um, you know, whether that's overly sensitive or not, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have known, but some people would have known that there's some right wing faction stuff, you know, based on the title of a mission or something to that effect. But I'm glad they made the right decision for them. Um, the starter box contents uh, for uh, uh, Sol Solar Auxilia uh, Dread Ends. That, am I saying that right? No. Oh, so for the space dread Marines, and four it, dread, you get four dreadnoughts. Oh, okay. That's your notes. That's my notes. And I made a typo. Yeah. Okay. Please four dreadnoughts. Know. Yep. And then what, what for solar auxilia? You get four Ogren and four Sentinels. Four Ogren. Right. Yeah. We just talked about that. Yep. And, and then, then I don't have you get tanks okay. with both factions. Um, and then the two warhounds that can go wherever. Okay. Interesting. Now the, the sort of some of the tanks are, as we talked about earlier, are not yet available mm -hmm. widely. The, uh, the uh, outside of the starter pre box predator yeah, yeah. and uh sakarns sakarn uh, none of the tanks in the box are available yet <laughs> oh interesting. yeah yeah true. so you can't get layman rust tanks and kratos you can't get Malkadors. yeah kratos you can get bane blades you can get but those are not with the starter they're not with the, the starter, starter box yeah um so i put in here a note the box the starter boxes is very interesting to me in terms of because if you if if you try and go okay other than just as a fan look at this box as a new gamer, if I am brand new coming to Legions Imperialis, is this a two player starter box? I don't think it is. Oh, really? Why I, is that? Well, for one, the two factions aren't evenly matched. They're not evenly matched in points yeah. and they're not evenly matched in combat ability. Per the way the game works, you can't technically field the two Warhounds. So even if I went, okay, I'm not going to worry about rules. You're going to take the, the space Marines and one Warhound. I'm going to take the solar auxilia and right. another Warhound right. and we're going to play. You would not have an enjoyable experience. Interesting. The box is not formatted in a way that it presents itself in a welcome to legions Imperialis. This is how you approach the game. Mm -hmm. It's not presented yeah. in a starter friendly way. The um, inclusion of, of Titans, which is you, you can't legally feel Titans at this scale. Like obviously later down the road, Titans are going to be great and fun and useful. Um, but the inclusion of two Titans with two separate factions instead of something like terrain was an interesting choice for me. Uh -huh. and now I get it from an aesthetic uh -huh. point of view because Legions Imperialis is a game about 
scaled warfare and yeah. bespoke units and we have infantry yeah. tanks yeah infantry, titans, walkers tanks, knights titans. <clears throat> like you get all things all things 40 30k great and small is the game so it's visually telling that story from a gameplay standpoint it's not as satisfying what's in the box the That's best thing really you can do is you and a buddy each buy a starter box and split and then trade and halves trade yeah um and that will that will get you a very and enjoyable that's place exactly to start. What I did, yeah. And clearly, Games Workshop knows this, right? Some of it, some of the box has to be marketing. the The inclusion of the warhounds is like, look, and I also get these great warhounds. Yeah. They know people are. Splitting. We should say that uh, the warhounds also came with a new weapon sprue. Yeah which is new plastic weapons that are Titanicus compatible. Yeah. Uh, and the only place you can get them at the moment until these Warhounds come it's out in and their new repackaging is in that starter set. So yeah. a lot of Titanicus players already excited about Legion Sparrows because of the scale compatibility and Titans being compatible. Um, this is the only way you could get those new weapon sprues also. I hope they release those this sprues time. separately. I doubt it. I doubt it. Too. I think they're only going to come in the, the new Warhound so box when they repackage that. I think yeah. so. I will say it is worth worth noting we haven't said this and if you don't know you don't know uh titan uh adeptus titanicus legions imperialis not the same game no they are two no, separate games like entirely yeah, separate yeah. very very different games yeah. different uh different audiences different rule sets completely different but, but compatible miniatures yeah. so here's the interesting Fun with thing toys two ways i'll throw out to your point same there. with aeronautic imperialis yeah. planes are also fully compatible very different game so here's what i'll throw out to your point, Jody, is what I'm hearing is this starter set. Is it called a starter set? I don't think it I is. I don't think it is. It's also, I would argue, um, not for a new hobbyist. And I there here's my my que yes and question. Yeah. Is this still living under the banner of what we, we think of as specialist games? So, yes, it is. Right? And I think that's probably and given that's, that's a good point, given who I'm assuming most of the audience that's tuning in and hanging out with us is, is, is it's worth noting. This is in the specialist game vibe of Necromunda of yeah. that. It's a curated experience that you are signing up 30 K you are signing up for a, a curated experience that you want to have. It's not a, a this is a bespoke presented less mainstream le yeah it's just it's I gonna ask you to do some things i feel those specialist games that's a that's a really interesting point you just made and i feel like you hit on it which is 40k age of sigmar war cry kill team those are the entry points yep for the games workshop hobbies yeah when you start to look further you go oh look they also do these other games now that i've gotten my feet wet mm -hmm. these oh this sounds kind of fun necromunda is definitely like it's funny people we talked about this on our episode about necromunda recently was is um people are always like oh well it's it's cheaper to get into meh oh, yeah <laughs> yeah and this is definitely in that uh, uh, model wise yes all the books all the books not. you're gonna buy no you know the it, terrain maybe not yeah <laughs> so it, it all adds up but but that's interesting yeah i hadn't really I hadn't thought about that in a long time. That, yes, you're right. This does live in the specialist games domain. Right. Uh, and that is, there's a very clear line of delineation. I would argue those specialist games lines, which do not include War Cry, Kill Team, right? Those are all mainstream. Right. Correct. Yeah. Uh, those specialist games are really for, I think, I don't want to sound gatekeepy, but like the advanced hobbyist, advanced gamer. Right. Um, there's going to be things you're going to have to fill in on your own. There's going to be conceptual things. I think you're going to have to curate your game with your opponent a little bit more. It's unusual that somebody would get started. They're like, I'm just getting started in Games Workshop stuff. I'm starting with Necromunda. I think this is even further afield of that. I'm right. starting with Legions Imperialis. Right. Which is interesting. I couldn't uh, even remember the name of it. There's, the there's Legions Imperialis Facebook group, which is more like hobby centric. Uh, but there are definitely people that are brand new to miniature gaming jumping in with Legions Imperialis, which is an interesting choice for them because it, like, it's going to be a very different experience. It, well, and it's weird because I would say rules wise, which we'll get to here in a bit, is it is a better spot to jump in. Yeah, it is more rules friendly 
not the way the book's laid out, but <laughs> as the game actually yeah, yeah. works, as how the game plays, it, it's a very easy to to grok game and get your your fingers and yeah. into and it's and present simple interesting system discussions. With but yeah, the box ones. itself is yeah. weird. Well, I'll say on the, the caveat of that is Games Workshop has put out a uh, formation that is specific to the starter set. So if you are combining your Space Marines and Solar Auxiliary and a Scout Titan, uh, there is a legal formation that they release specifically for the box set. But I can play that box set against yours. Yes. Not, I get a box set and you and I play. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. Now you can do what Josh and I did. And I think this is, again, going back to my earlier comment about start small, Yeah. is I don't remember exactly what the solar auxilia player needs to pull one or two units out. Yeah. Leave out the Titans and you can play and it's an enjoyable game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you have terrain. Yes. You need to get your terrain squared away because none's in the box because none's in the box. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting choice, but I get, so, so this is, I might be oversharing here, but I'm, I'm going to live with it. So having done the play testing I've got to do with blitz bowl, uh -huh. we have to talk about every time we've done that, what's going to be in the box, right? How many individual cards <clears throat> are in the deck? Yeah. How many team cards? We had an interesting conversation with James Hewitt about like the, the number of squares you move is like perfect and balanced. And we're like, how did you come up with that? He's like, it's the size board that would fit in the size box. I was allowed yes. to use. Yes. With the so size without a doubt, the <laughs> thinking about the degree of thought that goes into what's going to be in this box has a lot to do with how many sprues are in the box. 100%. So if you and said we we need terrain in this game to really have the game experience, which you do, we're going to pull the warhounds out. Nope. We're going to pull one of the sprues Why? and tanks out. Why not no. the warhounds? What's the game about? What's on the cover of the box? That's true. You yeah. got a good point. From, and from a gameplay starter perspective, I think the Warhounds are the thing to pull out. From a marketing standpoint, as you were yeah. saying earlier, but I think, no. and it, then yeah. it doesn't appeal to my Imperial. Yeah. Then yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to pull in those Titan. Titan You've got a players. very good point. I mean, it's all about the marketing. It's it. it's just interesting. I don't. No, no, think it's, it's bad. It's just like it's hmm. just it's it, you have to. They have to consider all these things too. Like I said before, uh, Leviathan is the most complex starter set they have made for Warhammer 40,000. It has, they had to commit like something like 18 different sprues to that. Like they, they're, yeah. When so I, much tool when I it. talk to yeah. people over there, they're like, we've never had to do that. Like normally it was like four, <laughs> you know? And now you're talking like, there's all these bespoke things in it and it's incredible, but you raise a really, really good point, Jody, which is, like there's a lot of thought that goes into it and we can sit here in armchair quarterback and sure. why didn't they include this? And it's like, well, there's probably a reason. There's a reason there and, it, is. <laughs> and it might not be the reason you want to hear. <laughs> right. It's not, well, would this present the best possible experience for two players to grab this box? No, because there's a lot of other considerations, but also the argument it also, that it is a specialist game Yeah, yeah. that, and, and not to use that as an excuse, but it really is. This is, this is in this different niche. That's there why seems, we have this arm. Seems to be different design criteria for <laughs> that than the other. And I'd say it might answer why. And this is my one of the entire box. Josh, you probably know where to go. And my one like genuine critique is the tokens that you use oh, constantly. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, Josh, you've mentioned it. I know yeah, they're, junk. They're, they're terrible. Yeah. yeah, it may literally come down to what weight of cardstock could we justify? That's quite possible. Spending it, money on yeah. to put in the box. We, or we hit our dollar is, threshold. What does the box weigh? Or yep. I, every uh, it's it's the size of the box is how do I ship it? It's like, fascinating when you think about every piece of that that goes. In. I mean, yeah, there is a standard box size for yeah. these things, just I mean, like board games. There's space in the box, but uh, so I, it was some other consideration: weight, cost, etc. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And there's a dollar amount they can comfortably yeah. go. We can spend this much on this box. It's got to it. sell it at this I'll price. I bet point. you that's what. Yeah, that's what it was. And the card the, stock. The card will. stock is expensive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank God. I mean, we board players. game enough that we see, <laughs> yeah, or coin game holders or something, because yeah. <laughs> you need something because they're terrible. But that's yeah, that's fascinating. That's actually some really interesting points you just brought up. I had not. The considered. other thing I'm going to say is because this was delayed a couple months. We don't know exactly, but yeah. roughly four months, four to six months. Um, we also were able to see a lot of uh, the previews of what what is coming because we already know what's coming in the next. It was almost releases. painful. Yeah, yeah. 
because we had so much time. Um, but that being said, this isn't, this box is not sold as a complete game. Like it is very much intended to be played with everything else that is being released. And yeah. we've already previewed, we already yeah, know yeah, what's yeah. coming. We yeah. know what's coming, but it's going to be there and what it's going to do and what it's going to add to it. So this box is not a self-contained box. Why did I box. get into this game? Yeah. <laughs> well, this I brings us to so the, much. that actually goes to the next point yeah. of, of in the notes, you've got what about the absorption of Aeronautica, Perialis and Adeptus Titanicus? into the game, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, and that is the game, like make no mistake this game. And I think it's one of the most interesting parts of Legion's Imperialis or its epic predecessors was that it's a game that has these different bespoke units that you ha you can have jets and Titans yeah. and yeah. infantry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a game because it's set to do that from the beginning. Yeah it makes all those things play well together. They had to yeah. have this planned out when they did, when they did Aeronautica Imperials. I don't think so. You don't, uh -huh. I do. Uh, James, so James Hewitt had said in our, in our Facebook group that they had, uh, when they designed Titanicus, they had left space and kind of design and intentionality in the potential of being able to bring right. Epic to right. the Titanicus rule set. <laughs> this is obviously a departure from that, but uh, because it is a very different game. It's gone the other direction. It's actually. gone the other direction. They've actually brought Titanicus into Legion's Imperialis instead. Yeah, um, yeah which um, so there, there was design and intention and space there, but that is not the direction that. What I'm saying is specials games went model wise. Yeah, there had to be some forethought at the beginning of we're going to do this Aeronautica Imperialis thing. We should pick this scale. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. Scale. Hey, absolutely. We're going to do Titanicus. Yeah. yeah. This is the scale we're using. Yes. Hey, okay. Legions Imperialis. This is a scale. It all matches. Yeah. Like we, we picked a scale and we stuck with that yeah. scale. I'm not saying they, like, they knew from the get go, we're going to do Legion Imperialis. We're going to make these. Right. Whichever that. one came first, probably said, <laughs> this is the scale now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I wonder a bunch of that probably had to do with the tooling and what they could do sure. and where detail is those, yeah, those Titans scale. still blow me away for the details yeah. of those it's Titans planes crazy tanks. everything at that scale looks great it's, yeah it's insane yeah yeah all right so moving forward um <laughs> we I think we've got a little was, no we're actually that right was a track. really <laughs> great point let's talk about the rule book a bit I'm pretty sure looking at the way it's laid out and what what not Paul Rudge's team over at Specialist Games that did yeah. all the Imperial Armor stuff. Now they're really focused on this kind of stuff. You can tell by the way it's laid out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Pretty sure that's his team doing this stuff. It's very on par with a way uh, thicker than yeah, I thought. Imperial it would Armor be. book. Yeah, it, it's 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 a beefy book. Yeah, yeah. A lot of rules, uh, but lore, lore. There's definitely <clears throat> lore on there. It's uh, they kind of shorten the Horus Heresy explanation a bit to yeah. give you what's going on. I it, thought that was yeah, cool. it's Horus Heresy. So it, it has uh, painting that picture, uh, and then you're going to go through the rule book itself, which has, like I should say, it's a high quality book. It's got the ribbon, yeah. built into it for your uh, bookmark in there. It's uh, standard size, so it's not yeah like the Imperial Armor books used to be larger. They're not doing right. that anymore. Yeah. These yeah. are all the same. Yep. a5 or whatever they call I it i do kind of wish now that you said that i'm like oh it would have been so cool if it had like a matte finish instead of the super gloss finish but that's that's just wish listing <laughs> i was like oh but to really make that point it might, have been nice. but it might cost more <laughs> um but it looks it's a beautiful more. book like <laughs> yeah. yeah anything i'm about to production say production quality it's fantastic yeah <laughs> beautiful and it holds together it unlike my leviathan, unlike book. leviathan. <laughs> the spine yeah. pretty good yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's great it is not user friendly you know, and this has been, say what you mean by that, Jody, because I have a feeling, and we haven't pre-discussed this, but I have a uh -huh. feeling it's the same issue I have with a couple other rule books. So there's two issues. One is it is not laid out in a sequential way, which bugs me. Okay. You don't start playing the game at the beginning of the book. Okay. You go to the back of the book to start playing the game, and then you go back to the front, like lay out the book in the order that if somebody is new to the game, this is the order you experience the game. It's not laid out that way, which is just, it's kind of, or a page at the beginning says, how do you use this book? It's not so necessarily sure. a Why not? great way to learn the rules or a great gameplay reference. Oh, that's interesting. Which so is interesting because it does the way it jumps cause, around. Cause that's what I was gonna say about 40 K 40 K is laid out to like here. We're walking you through each step, but when you try to reference it, it's a nightmare. Right. Right. When you get to the gameplay turn part, just the rules of we're going to walk you through a turn, it does an okay job yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, GW has a strange 
avoidance of rules repetition. Like they don't like repeating themselves in their rule books, which means you get a, so the morale test, how morale works. There's, it's on a two page spread. One of us talking about close combat, one's talking about the end phase. And then there's a final morale checks during the end phase. And at no point does it combine all the various effects that all can play out in the end phase. There's no like cross-referencing within itself as a document. Right, right. So it's just, yeah, as Josh said, it's not great to learn the game from what is ostensibly a pretty simple game. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's not great not as a, a reference. Great, well, so there's special weapon, there's weapons rules, and then there's unit special rules, and they're alphabetically listed. So why are those two sections? <laughs> they're all yeah. special rules. It's not 50 pages of them. Right. They're just, just make an alphabetical listing of special rules. They're universal special rules. There's that word. <laughs> right. That aren't crossing 20 different armies. They're right. Right. Two armies. Right. Like just put them <laughs> in alphabetical order. So when I need to reference it, I go, oh, it's the special rules. Set. Flip, flip, flip there. And, and I will say like, I am quadruply critical of this because I'm going to bring in the other hobbies, but like the indie role-playing scene right now of like, there's a lot of small press role-playing games being made mm -hmm. that are being made at an incredible level of production value in terms of thought about layout and design that this book shows none of interesting. Like that's just things about how have you formatted your sections? How, how is a header set in? Right. How do you call out important information? There's essential rules that are in call out boxes. And anybody who's played GW games for a long time goes, well, of course the little call out box in the corner is it's a little box in the corner. If it's an important rule, it needs to be in the rules. And it, it's, it's rampant and like, make sure you read the last sentence and read the, <laughs> yeah. it still has to read the whole paragraph. Definitely, yeah. definitely has that. That's my favorite. Somebody yeah. new to GW is like, Hey, when you're reading a rule, read all the way to the end. Yeah. Don't read a section and stop go all the way to the whole, except, except on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. It's, it's fair criticism. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All that being said, the book does contain everything you need to play. Yep. Uh, has all the rules for your army list. <laughs> It has all the rules for your, your units and all the special rules that do pertain to the weapons they have, the unit, yeah. the actual uh, entries, the special rules that each unit has, has all the weapon profiles, has the how to play, has all your missions, your secondary missions, your board layouts, everything like that is fully contained in the book. Yep. Um, I will say the one caveat to the rule book that we're talking about, this is one of the few games that I have the physical uh, rule book and I actually took the time, the five minutes it took me to put little uh, tabs for each of the sections so I can easily quick reference it. But I did end up picking up the digital copy of this rule book anyways, because just being able to do, add a bookmark or do a search was paramount for me. And I know I'm going to play this game for a long time and it's like the I $35 or whatever with costs. digital books. I, I have really a hard do. time reading on screen. Yeah. Yeah. But in the, like the 3,500 point game we were referencing, I could just easily yeah. hit my bookmark or do a You're quick search it, and it would sure. find it where, where I needed to be way quicker than any of the three other people flipping through a physical copy of a book. So. I will say, and Josh, I think you say this somewhere in our, our show notes of, of, but once you get it down, yeah. you've got it. Yep. You, Titanicus is the same way. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and for Titanicus, for me, it was one or two turns and you're like, oh, got it. Yeah. You know, and yeah, there's a couple little things oh well when they walk over the side well, let's look up that you know but for the most part it's just like every round went without looking up a rule the deck i went and played up it up in uh uh the gothamos gaming group guys yeah yeah like i don't i think i looked at the rule book one time right yeah yeah and this will probably get to that point pretty quickly for folks yeah. and that i will say the deck of cards that Super are handy. sold out immediately yeah. are tremendously helpful. And that's a space Marine second edition. Actually, that's a space Marine first edition. Yeah. You had unit cards um, in part because the way the cards how you tell you how formation. to build your army. Yeah, like there's right. literally like, take this card, here's your detached formation rules. Now here's the cards you can stick on it. Um, the only really complaint I have about the cards because they are a very useful reference, uh, but it is a valid complaint. I think <laughs> is that it doesn't tell you how many of what weapons you have and certain vehicles have multiples. have multiples. Yeah. Uh, so it has a reference and a profile of everything, but spawns and weapons, for example, are one weapon system, even though it's two separate guns, it is one weapon system where if you have whole mounted guns on a Kratos, for example, they have two of those. Those are two separate systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the card does not call that out. So yeah, you, the rule book will say 
two hole mounted and blah 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 sponsors. But the card doesn't. But for formatting, that's what they cut off okay. the card. And yeah. it's like that's important. That was All right, so let's let's just in the interest of time. Yep. Let's just quickly go through like it, it like all games workshop games, it's gonna follow like a format, right? You have one phase to leads to it, and all these things occur in it, and then another phase, all these things occur in it. Just walk me quickly through each of the phases. Yep. Yeah, so quickly is uh, first thing you're going to do is the order phase. So yeah. there, every unit secretly gets an order assigned to it. And then you flip over said orders and then you find out the initiative, which is the initiative phase. So while you're setting orders, it's in, interesting to note that you don't know if you're going first or second, if you have that activation. Again, it's alternating activations. So not a huge deal in order of activations, but also can lead to some really interesting moments of the kind of play counterplay do you have to give an order to every unit every unit will get an order yeah. yes uh units inside of transports get separate orders than the transports themselves it can be the same order but you're going to assign them individually so there's lots of flexibility in there uh, after orders and initiative then everybody moves and then it goes into combat and combat includes first fire orders uh, which it means you you haven't moved you are just shooting this turn uh engagements which is all your close combat, close combat fighting yeah. and then uh, advancing fire which is everybody else who wasn't on first fire or in combat now gets to shoot do the normal shooting one really smart mechanic of the game is as you're resolving in the combat phase usually in the combat phase as you're resolving units to go how do we keep track of who's done what you just pluck the orders off and yeah. at the end of the turn you should have no orders nobody on should have an order still right. sitting yep. on them yeah yep. and there is a rule if you forget to give somebody an order you they just have an advance order that is your, your that's, that's your default, default, your default right. order um, is advance if you've forgotten something yeah yeah and it's and then when we say it's alternating activation in movement it's you move a unit. A, what's called a detachment yeah which is a so a group of space marine infantry that's alike or a group of and then i move one and we go back and forth in that way but then that jo point josh brought up at the top of the show of like oh and during that my rhinos are going to charge this unit that you had and the conversation becomes well if they're on first fire they're a little bit better at overwatching or were they charging and now they're not going to be able to charge because they got charged first and and that that back and forth is incredibly satisfying yeah yeah, yeah. i would say yeah. that uh, overall i guess we, i'll save it for the end never mind um <laughs> I, I think now's a good point to talk about just army construction and how sure. it plays um so the first thing you're going to do is you choose your faction uh, and then you choose loyalist or trader so you, right now you have either astartes or solar auxiliary and then you have all the different and both of those can be loyalist or trader. yes you can go either way and then you have all the legions inside of that for the astarte side so all the 18 available legions are there um and somewhat unique each one yeah each yeah. one has a a special rule that sets them apart um not unlike horus heresy where, yeah yeah, yeah. And these are, it's pretty minor, but some of them are really good and some of them are very flavorful and there's kind of an interesting spectrum of that mix in between. Um, some of them are <laughs> flavorful and powerful and some of them are just kind of more on the flavorful side. Okay. Um, so there, there is a, maybe a little bit of disparity in the rules, but again, specialist game and it's, it's going to be fun. And, and it'll it, be interesting to see if they get to a point where they're releasing units specific to, uh, factions, um, I think yeah, they I mean, will Heresy specifically. Does, we'll see. Right. The the next book has previewed a Blood Angel specific oh, uh, formation. There you go. So there are at least maybe formations, not necessarily units, but we'll see. That would how, be a smart. That'd be though, the cheaper but, way to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So once you have your your faction decided, now you're going to go into formations. So formations are uh, groups of detachments that have required components to them and then they have optional and these are basically slots you're filling it's a kind of a force org chart yeah. each formation is its own force org chart so you're going to have one to four roughly required detachments that have to go into that formation mm -hmm. um and then um you're going to have multiple formations um you can you need to have at least one formation per 1500 points that you're playing so in a 3000 point game you have to bring at least two formations uh for example so a formation could be something like a battle a line of battle tanks yeah and it, your compulsories are all going to be battle tanks right it's line of, or it could be the uh the you get like the the demi companies the, and the demi company for, that's, there's, there's like Marines, so last rifle sub cohort you got the you're all your tertios i don't remember what yeah, they call for the solar <laughs> rocks but uh demi companies are it's all your marines this right. is your standard so you got Boots your, on the your hq marine all of your tactical marines then you can bring in specialists like assault marines terminators plasmas missile yeah. launcher guys yeah, and all yeah. your sport um 
So uh, you're, you're going to build your yeah your army based upon formations, and then formations are made up of detachments. Detachments are effectively a unit. Got it. Um, which say each base is considered a model. So even though you have five guys on a base, for example, it's a model. It's a model. Uh, and then, then a why do they sell me 120 models in? <laughs> <laughs> which is actually six detachments. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So that's construction effectively like the tier of, of yeah. construction yeah. Yeah. um all right so, and I'll, I'll say just real quick on construction is that your primary faction is going to be uh 70 or more of your total points and then you can bring up to 30 points or 30 percent, i should say uh maximum of kind of allies which is what you consider so these are uh knights titans solar yeah. auxiliary yeah. different kinds of Space Marines. <laughs> How do you expect those rules to change when larger Titans get brought in? I don't expect them to change. They're so all available. In order to bring in a Reaver Titan, mm -hmm. you have to play a game. Yep. A much larger game. Yes. So you can legally field a Reaver in a 1500 point game. Oh, well, that's okay. And I'd in say order to bring in a Warlord Titan. <laughs> But that's interesting. No, then I should say the rules for all the Titans and Knights already exist. It's yeah. in the rule book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are all included. That's and a I, good point. I would say that fifteen hundred points seems to be the 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 minimum. Viable. This is where the game operates. Minimal yeah. viable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and not a like you're playing a watered down version. But like if you're playing a fifteen hundred point game, things should be working properly. I think you get the full game experience at fifteen. Yeah. That's that's a fair point. Yeah, I and think, and you can feel like Josh said, up to a reaver in that points game. Um, I will say you're probably you, really heavy on one unit. If that's the case there, uh, exactly. There, there is a lot of interesting balance in how the game works and how you build your army. Much and like what a you build it with Lord of war in a, yeah. Especially. The, yeah. Like, so a, a reaver Titan is a huge investment in points. So while you have one really powerful unit, you are now, you've got a lot of eggs in a single basket. So you're losing uh, activations. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is actually something that yeah. you should talk if people have not played alternating activation games, when one opponent outnumbers another opponent by a significant amount, that is a huge, um, there's definitely advantages there. That's a huge loss of advantage. Yeah. yeah. If you're outnumbered, like this, all of a sudden you're watching your opponent take a bunch of moves and you're doing nothing. <laughs> And I would say Legion <clears throat> Imperialis and, and Epic had the same rule system. The way the morale system works in the game is a wonderful counterpoint to that. Yeah. Like it's how they counterpoint undeniably getting out activated. Your opponent has more units than you do is a problem. You always have the choice of, so if I take a detachment of four Marine stands, I can just buy more stands to throw in there more. Right groups of guys yep. so i go up to like eight nine ten squads of just marines instead of four mm -hmm. well the the break point for that unit when they have to start <clears throat> taking morale tests is when they get below 50 percent right so if i have a bigger unit it's a lot harder to get them just to the to point break. also when they charge they're more likely to survive through the overwatch there's a lot of benefits yeah to having a big unit yeah so if but you, you lose out on activation but you lose out on activation so it's a i think it's a really nice balance of how these two things are working yeah and it's a huge concern because at a certain point as you're going through learning and playing you're going to reach an equilibrium where you're like this works for me like this right. yeah. balance of this size units with this yeah. at this level and there's room in that balance for play style and like sure. how, how do you want this to play what do you want this force to do and i think a huge part of this as starting at that discussion of like, this is a specialist style game. Th there's also an amount of how are you and your play group approaching games yeah. of this? Because if somebody shows up and they have nothing but flyers or you show up and you have a super tank heavy detachment versus you could very easily end up in games that just aren't very enjoyable. Sure. Um, is it thematic? Sure. Maybe. Yeah. But I think there's actually enough balance built into those things that like tanks, yes, can kill infantry very well, but infantry can swarm tanks and absolutely destroy them in melee. Flyers are really good and they're uh, a glass cannon. Flyers are very offensive. Until they take a hit. One hit and they're down. They're hard to hit, but flyers also can't grab objectives. So if you're putting a lot of points into flyers for that offensive ability, you're not grabbing objectives with those points. So I think there's a really interesting 
uh, every, and I have this in the notes here, every unit entry in every detachment has a role that it wants to fill. Interesting. And it, I think it's very balanced in how it does that. So you raised the interesting point, which was about grabbing objectives. So <clears throat> one of the things we discovered with Aeronautica Imperialis, it was my first foray into it. I was like, this is not very exciting. As soon as you introduced missions to it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, this is way different than I thought it was. It's not just dogfight and everybody piles into the middle. Um, this game it, we saw with Adeptus Titanicus as well. The missions are super important. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine they're super important here too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the the rule book comes with twelve missions out of the box. That's quite a few, uh, which is great. And there's uh, <laughs> deployment zones are tied to the mission specifically, so yeah. you get lots of variety in how you're going to deploy and how the game's going to happen. Um, Having read through all of them, um, there's a lot of interesting diversity in how the missions work, work too. Some okay. of them, you're moving objectives. Some of them, um, they're, they're all progressive scoring, I should say. So you are always in the game. You're always trying to score. It's not this the fifth fifth edition 40K. All the scoring happens on the end of the turn right. of the final turn. So you have all this crazy like maneuvering and grabbing and things like that. You're progressively scoring throughout the course of the game. Infantry are the best at scoring objectives. Then you go to walkers and cavalry tanks, uh, etc. And then, uh, the, the, the smaller you are, the better you are at grabbing an objective. So Titans, for example, can't grab objectives. Uh, planes get pulled out before objectives are grabbed. So planes aren't contributing anything like that. So you need to build a force that is uh, varied to deal with all you kind of, you want, you, you want to offer all, problems and solutions yeah. to what your opponent has at the same time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. The game does a great job of, of demanding to a degree. And I think uh -huh. maybe a better way of saying what I was saying before is, is it, you are kind of forced to take a combined arms approach. Yes. Right. Um, fielding exclusively infantry, for example, you'd be great at claiming objectives. If the other person has a significant number of tanks and a little bit of an infantry screen, the tanks are gonna blow your infantry away before they can get to, to swarm. Yes, they could swarm them. They're not gonna get there. They're gonna get blown up. What about air power? I, like, I don't have much in the way air power. Should I start investing? It's a good, it, <laughs> it's again, it's hyper-specialized. Like yeah. it is designed yeah. to do something very right. specific. Uh, I would say of all of the parts, air powers, the least, the least like necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was kind of the gist I got, but eventually Even, I want to, I just, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll probably it. want a few, but really like, three to five planes is probably all you're okay. ever going to want. Really. You can definitely go more, but I, I think you're losing out too much on the defensive and objective scoring mm -hmm. side. If you invest any more heavily than that. And there's an interesting, it's in a weird way. Planes are a great example of, of some of what I'm, I'm having a hard time fully capturing is even within air power, there are different planes with different roles. There's, there are planes For that sure. are specifically intended to shoot down other planes mm -hmm. and they're very good at it. Yeah. And then there's trans, there's a Thunderhawk, which is going to Transport. swoop in and drop off a bunch of dudes <clears throat> and hopefully be survivable enough to do that. And even within that little set of like aerial units, well, what kind of aerial unit are you bringing in? Why? And it goes back to that again, that idea of thinking about like an overall battlefield approach and overall, yeah. what is my battle plan? How am I going to play out these units together? What What's responsible for taking objectives? I think it's worth not going through the nitty gritty of it, but there's actually a hierarchy of how do you claim objectives and you total up the, the models within three inches and each one of those has a value based on what it is. Sure. So an infantry stand is is a five. Whereas yeah. a tank is a two, right? This is a, yeah, it's objective very similar control. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Com comparison to 40 K. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, and, and you, and then you have to double to yeah. actually have control. So that scaling meaning, uh, if you have 10 points, I have to have 20 there. Yeah. Yes. So to, to own it, yeah. four stands of infantry is 20, right? Versus five tanks, which is 10, it's, it's 10. 10. So yeah. even though the tanks are outnumbering the number of models, so everything has its role and yeah, you use it and for that's that absolutely to the point yeah. Josh is saying is everything like, has a job and your job is to make sure you can prevent your opponent from letting their stuff do their job. Right. 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 Yeah. Shoot, shoot the chargey things and charge the shooty things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To a degree. Yeah. Okay. It's just, but and then a you have more, more, more layers. Yeah. That, yeah, the, so, <laughs> go ahead. Well, cause the, <laughs> the slices of cake are more similar. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, and it's actually a thing I really like about legions Imperialis is, is, 
even if I'm playing solar auxilia and you guys are playing two different flavors of Marines, yeah. it's pretty predictable about what's what, and it's not, well, your Marines operate this way and his right. Marines operate. It's all pretty known. We're they're all not, playing they're open not Eldar hand. in Battlefleet Gothic. Yeah. We're all playing with our, our, uh, yes. the hand is known. Right. right. So it's, so, so what did you do while you were playing that made the difference? What right. decisions did you yeah, make? Right. It, you which, didn't win the battle when you built your army. Right. There, there are way, way I, I haven't seen any yet, any gotcha moments of like how you built your list or what you did. It really becomes a, a more uh, tactical game on how you executed your things and how efficient we're at using your, this your detachments. At like you I'm going to be terrible. At it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very few moving parts. <laughs> okay. But yeah, th and that is a good thing to say there is that overall the rule set is actually quite simple. It is a simple game system, but there is also lots of nuance inside of that on sure. how things work. This is a, definitely a easy to learn, difficult to master type of game. Um, and a lot of that's that tactical nuance and figure out what things are best at doing as they're on their battlefield role. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing important, and I see that you have bolded here is terrain. Yes. Terrain is very important. Yeah. Very important. Uh, a variety of terrain is important. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the big thing for terrain is structures, uh, as Jody alluded to earlier, uh, structures can be destroyed. So that's a cool thing you can do similar to the optional rules in Titanicus buildings can actually be blown up. Uh, buildings are a, a bunker for infantry infantry want to be in buildings. Um, they are more defensive. They get a cover save. They're harder to hit because they're taking cover inside of the building. Right. Their footprint becomes instead of their base, they take over the entire the whole building, building. Of, yeah. is their footprint. So things with, uh, or so if it's near an objective that counts towards you, the objective. You are counting every, every base in that building towards your objective. So very strong, both offensively and defensively for infantry being in buildings. Infantry are the only thing that are allowed to occupy buildings. Um, and they're they're hard to shake once once they kind of are dug in there they're they're dug in um so having some options of things that can either ignore cover or destroy buildings yeah. is a an yeah, important yeah. thing to bring in a list as well right uh, also another instance where having a larger uh detachment yeah. is because a building can hold a de most buildings can hold a detachment is that four bases of infantry or is it 10 or 20 bases of infantry. Oh, that's a very interesting point. So the larger if, unit, if you stuck eight guys in a building right next to an objective, you have eight, eight units. Right. And now if I only models have in that building, four guys in that building and you <laughs> shoot at it and you can kill a couple bases, uh, they might take off and run away and out, of the out of the building. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that number thing that's starts being point. really important. Also, when you charge the building, if you, cause you can just assault the building. And if you win assaulting a formation that's in a building, if it's infantry, they can drive them out and take the building yeah, over, take it over, which is really, which I, is love awesome. thematic. I love that. Yeah. I love but that. The, it was uh, one of the things in drop fleet commander. I liked too, was like when you drop guys off to go in a building, you're searching for the object, like they'd have to search and the objective would get progressively easier to find as yeah. they were spending more time. In there. Cool. I just always thought that was like a really cool, I kind of dig the buildings as a function of the game. Yeah. You know, it's not just getting in the way. It's like, oh no, no, these are yep. important. And yeah, measuring ranges, you measure off <clears throat> any part of the building. Sure. Yep. Um and and the guys in the building, every single one of them counts as being in base contact for a close assault. Sure. Whereas the assaulting force, the guys who are in base contact with the building are the only ones that's counted. the only ones yep, fighting. Right. There's no yeah. all, it is worth noting in close combat, there's no rings of the guys it's are you in base to base or not yes you right. either, you either made it or you didn't yeah. yeah it's all or nothing for that yeah. uh buildings Simplified. also block line of sight it's a true line of sight game so if which you have tricky. big enough buildings or things like that especially which, it's such a small this is tiny yeah. <laughs> well, i can see his arm i haven't what needed arm? to bust out a laser pointer yet but it's probably not a bad thing to have for the game just because it's hard to get yeah. your face yeah. that low to the game because the scale is so small as justin says hey live it yeah. <laughs> uh but as we we're talking buildings are really they're a hard nut to crack they are really uh buildings That's make cool. armor saves on 2d6 so it's a five up save for your kind of standard civitas 2D6 build, for the, but 2d6 added together so for the building itself yeah, yeah. not the guys in it yeah yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so buildings themselves are actually very hard to take out so it is important if you want to take buildings out and get to that kind of the, the juicy meat inside that uh, you, you have something that can get through that armored shell. Um, if you're in the building and it falls down, 
That's bad. It's bad. It's bad for yeah. the guys inside. Yeah. Like instant bad? No, not instant bad. No, you're making saves. You're, you're yeah, losing, yeah. you're losing, you're guys. losing some guys. And you're also not in a building anymore yeah. as you should <laughs> if a building <laughs> collapses um, on you. So the next one that's, that's really neat is area terrain. Yes. It's been such a joy of, I have stands of trees that are just like model railroad trees glued down to a piece of particle board that I literally made when I was playing Space Marine back in the days. And I still I have think, them. I think Josh had mentioned that you had some of this stuff and you guys were using it. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm getting these back out <laughs> for this game again. Yeah. Um, the cool thing with a big, a, a grove of trees, cause that's, yeah. we're not talking about a tree, it's a, a grove of trees or park, is infantry and walkers can move through it freely. Yeah, You can't trace line of sight through it. And if you're one inch within it, you can't see in or out of it. Yeah. So you can go in there and just, in fact, with the small games we played, I had a little group of uh, the, what are they called? Veltari, the, the ax guys for the solar auxiliary. They just hung out in the woods the whole game, claiming an objective. Claiming that, that objective and being can't safe. shoot me. They can't and be shot. Do you want you to, have to come in here to you get to, me. And it's yeah. a bunch of dudes with power axes. Yeah. You really want to charge <laughs> get the answers. <laughs> that's that's why they're the trees are chopping them together. <laughs> and they're just, yeah, exactly. just, they're just, just straight up the Ultima the online. As, as Josh, how his hands are feeling about splitting all that oh, wood man. he did the other day. That was impressive. blisters. So that that's another line of sight blocker, the area train. And then you can say, oh, it's dangerous. It's difficult. And then you can stack descriptors. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Ruins. You can add ruins, similar. lava, things like that. Ruins. Um, the other thing is saying if you're not deep into the woods or if you're not deep into the ruins, then uh, it's just a penalty to to be hit. So yeah. you get some defensive pen, uh, bonuses without being the impossible to, I won't say impossible, but hard to crack nut of uh, what a structure actually is. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Sounds fascinating. Yeah. It, it's, it, it brings a ton to the game. The building piece i mean there's a reason when you look back at space marine first and second edition first edition adeptus titanicus they came with buildings yeah. like and, yeah. and it is a little bit of a shame that they did the now to be set. fair they did release a box set of terrain yep. right as they released this some new stuff too some yep. new ruins like some of it was yep. retreaded all uh, the existing uh, titanicus stuff yep. is still valid and compatible yeah it's not like we don't have enough of that yeah three, and it worked three right. kits of that and then yeah they added the ruins specifically which also comes with a bunch of cool things like tank traps and shield Saw walls that. and things like that so i have picked up a box i just haven't built it yet because i wanted to get the the army ready to play with all the uh, stuff that I've got already. But yeah, terrain is definitely uh, an important part of this game. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's uh, take a break. We'll come back. We'll close out, give some final thoughts on this, and then we'll close out the show. All right. Let's, let's give some final thoughts here, and then we'll, we'll close out the show. Um, we didn't discuss the models. There's a a plethora of models that have been released already. Some are hard to find right now as they work through production pace and, and, and whatnot. Um, and then there, there's even more coming. Like I said earlier yeah. in the show, I don't have any uh, Predators. I don't have any um, Sakaran battle tanks. We'd like to get those. I know Land Raiders are coming out. My one... My one frustration with that, I hate the old land. I hate the mark. That Proteus. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'll live with it. Well, yeah. It'll be interesting because if it doesn't have the assault ramp, which they don't because of that style, um, I mean, they're, they're a good armor transport, but you're not like charging out of them. I think you're going to be able to look kind of what at the, the Horus Heresy for. range yeah. and then just go, well, what are they going to come out with? Yep. Oh, probably, a, you know, this, probably a that. It's, it's going to be, I think, fairly. I wonder... I wonder when they design these, if they, I mean, they have all these in digital files. Yeah. Like, so I wonder if they just literally go shrink it down, clean it up a little bit. I don't know. I'd be curious to know if it's designed wholly from scratch or if it's literally just taking. Well, knowing what we know from Titanicus, the Titans were shrunk down from the CAD files, but then they also they have to do something. They have to modify a little bit because not all details going to translate when it's shrunk down that small. Exactly. So they'll simplify about the Corvette, a little right? bit, but right. It, predominantly it is it is a scale shrink and then you're gonna remove some of that detail that would just be lost at that scale. how crazy is that yeah that's just it's awesome but <laughs> i don't know what details lost on those rhinos man those not, things, a lot. not much not a lot yeah. yeah the tanks are so Super fun to paint. good yeah. yeah and they are they are fun to paint yeah and not hard to paint even the infantry is not hard to paint it's just like oh god there's just there's lots a, of them there's just lots of them because <laughs> you are of them this size of the theater that you're fighting in, right? Well, this box contains over 125 models. 
I, yeah, yeah. I just realized my, <laughs> my bump from a fully painted 2000 point list to 3000 point list is like, Oh, that's about 40 more tactical Marines. So congratulations. That'll keep me busy for a while. The nine tanks will be a breeze, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I put here, uh, final under my final thoughts. <clears throat> Let's do yours first. Uh, what are your kind of final thoughts about the game? Yeah. About uh, where it's headed. I'm absolutely loving it so far. I'm excited for what's to come. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more variety in play styles that comes when you have drop pods and speeder bikes and land speeders and things like that. You're going to see more diversity in lists and representing uh, kind of, I think legions may maybe a little bit more thematically. Like white the scars table. would have yeah a ton more bikes and yeah. speeder bikes and speeders and uh, blood angels are going to get a bunch of drop uh, drop pods and maybe more assault troops. Oh, we haven't like seen that. drop pods yet. Those we know they're cool. coming. Yeah. Those are going to be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're going to be cool models. <laughs> they are. They're really cool. Um, look at tiny yeah. drop pod. <laughs> you know, everything is, so far has been an absolute blast to play. It's been really fun to paint. It's right. been fun to hobby. It's been cool coming back to kind of that eight millimeter mass battle effect and how it really does feel like a battle as Battles, Jody was it's saying, a, it's like a war your zone. Your it's discussion not, afterwards is about, yeah. yeah. 40K is that kind of zoomed into a particular yep. skirmish in that battle zone. This is the whole battle zone. And I really do feel like the overarching, like I'm, I'm the battlefield commander on the command barge up in space, directing orders and telling things where they need to go. And, and it really captures that feel well. You were super excited about this game coming out for a long time. I was not. <laughs> has it met your expectations so far? Yeah. Like, yeah and and it it's has. matching your excitement level. Yeah, definitely. Thank God, because yeah. that's why I got into it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm su super excited. And I'm, honestly, right now, I, I, I just can't wait to play more of it. All right. Yeah. Jody? Yeah, uh, that last bit, for sure. I am like, were you going to get into this? from the get-go like josh was no. or did josh suck you in like no. you did me <laughs> no you got sucked in on your own yeah so i was curious uh, I've, I've been hurt before yeah so i i needed to 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 tread lightly um when i saw that it was it was not epic armageddon it was not epic Forty Thousand. it right. was going back to the space marine rules with alternating activations which considering those rules came out you know in the 80s yeah. late 80s forward thinking yeah so far, I mean, there are games now that are chasing what yeah. this rule system does. <clears throat> yeah. And they did go in and they've cleaned it up. Like there are definitely some, some modern understanding of game design that's present. So it, when I saw that, then I was like, yep, I'm in. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew what that rule system offers and how different of an experience it is. It's one of the things that's always kind of kept me away from 30 K is I mean now substantially but when it when it's initial launch i was like i'm why am i just playing 40k with slightly different wrapping it's still just yeah. 40k mm -hmm. um and admittedly it's moved away from that especially now now it's a different animal but it's still that same scale and zone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas this is a a very different experience you are it yeah. doesn't feel like you're playing 40k i've heard a lot of people say of adeptus titanicus that like it doesn't feel like a gw game and i wouldn't say this it is does as and far. doesn't right right i mean of course it does it's yeah. made by you know and it's d6s and and this is the same way as you said you know it's phases and you work through the phases and that's a turn and that's it so there's those familiar things, but also, you know, I mean, how many years has the debate of like every time a new edition of 40 K drops, it's, are we going to alternating activations? The answer is no, we're not right. Um, here you are, you, you are, and yeah. you get to see all of it and it's well done because yeah. it has answers for the Achilles heel of alternating activations, yeah. which is, is misalignment of units. Um, right. the new yeah. models, and the game's better for it. Yeah. And the models are great like i mean at the it's end so of the day good. if the models didn't excite me i, w I wouldn't yeah. be they're shockingly good yeah. yeah like it's i i really didn't want to do this game <laughs> yeah. i'm so mad at you and sky <laughs> and jody the fact that uh, here's the other darn friends wanted to have what, fun with what me. here's the other thing i throw in there. No, we have like, 10 of us immediately excited to play this game how many it. people have been like i want to get into adept of Titanicus, but knowing my area plays it yeah this is a game where I'd be like, if you don't have somebody to play it with, contrary to your point earlier, Jody, where you kind of fostered that group at in your early days, mm -hmm. if you don't have somebody that's going to play this with you, I, I would kind of recommend don't get into it. Like, <laughs> I don't think to your point, Josh, 
when you got into 40K, you were like, well, I stopped doing Epic because there was a bigger pool of people to play with. And that's one of the main reasons I chose Warhammer 40,000 yeah. over anything else because I knew it had the biggest group. I could always find somebody to play with if I needed to find somebody to play with. It wasn't going to be an issue. I have bought games that I have then not had other people to play with and it's a sad time you know and you're like yeah. okay well shoot you know so i that is one of the reasons i got sucked into it too it's like all right all, everybody's doing it i guess i'll do it we got it if it's everybody pretty- was jumping off a bridge <laughs> carl would you jump over it? well apparently the answer is yes if they're jumping in for legions of Perialis, yeah. absolutely <laughs> are there miniatures at the bottom are they the riding on a titan <laughs> <laughs> you know and i i i i would i hate to agree with that because i want to tell everybody to go play this game right now um but if talk the, to your group, get your yeah. group involved in it before you make a, an investment. If it were a true two player starter box, that would be different. I would have a totally different opinion. I agree with you. I, I would be able, I would go, no, you're wrong. And here's why. But the fact that you're going to have to do some finessing to get that two player, that, that yeah. you and your buddy are not going to split this box and be done with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you get two and do a trade in there, one person's going solar, one person's going Marines. That is a great way. That is yeah. the best way to use this box. That is yes. an investment in money. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you have everything have. you need right there. Yes. Yeah. Other than terrain, other than and terrain. still and you're going to need terrain. You can get by without this. I think you can play this and have a very satisfying experience without the structures but you will need the area yeah. terrains to have Good an enough. interesting battle. On. Um, the buildings add a ton this, of fun. This, this but is not also... a planet bowling ball game. No, no, no. <laughs> and there are, there are only so many guns though that can knock down buildings. So even that, like out of yeah. the starter set, the Malkador I think is the only mm. tank in there that can actually hurt a building, mm. but the infantry can still do their cool stuff. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair that if, if nobody in your area is, is showing some zing for it, that I, I don't know that I would rush out and grab one of these starters with, to try to, to get try and involved. get yeah. people excited about it. Um, <clears throat> but doggone it, the rules are good. Go, <laughs> go to a convention, see it played. Uh, Maybe yeah. have somebody walk you through it and your friends through it and try to get you involved. Go to a local GW store if you have one and see if they can walk you through it if they have it available. Yeah. Like I think that's kind of your starting point. Like if you want to generate excitement and then get yeah. people playing on it. Um, my final, like I'm, I'm in obviously <laughs> stupid Josh. But grudgingly. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to love it. Yeah. Darn it. Just I love Titanicus. Just wait. Like, it's yeah. so fun. <laughs> so um, I feel like games workshops coming full circle. Like, how do you mean? What's old is new again. Mm-hmm. We talked about that at kind of the beginning. They've come out with this. I swear they're going to come out with Battlefleet Gothic. Old World is, uh, yeah, re released <clears throat> now. So Battlefleet Gothic's kind of the last thing there. I'm sure it's on there. A little check. Gorka Morka's already been in, uh, absorbed into the Ash Waste with Necromunda. And- yep. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's, you know, and, you know, while they do this, they also deliver new experiences. War Cry is, is a very different experience. Yeah. Yep. And um, it's just fascinating to see it kind of come full circle, you know. Um, but I think they're also in a smarter place. Like they're not like, this isn't like, this is not one of their main game lines. The the differentiation between the main studio and the, um, specialist games group is very interesting. And, and it's smart that they do that. Like it gives you a sense of like, here's the line of demarcation. You know, you're, you're in the pool. But if you want to go into the diving pool, <laughs> you know, it's over here yeah. and there's the people jumping off the 30 foot, you know, diving board, the deep and, dive. I would say this, this is a really successful nostalgia hit. Yeah. Like I, I can't, there's no way I, I mean, I, I'm, I know what color my kettle is enough to go like, <laughs> there is some nostalgia at play yeah, here. Sure. For yeah, of course. Big time. I don't um, have that. Right. But I am very excited about it. Yeah. And I think that and I'm actually curious and probably is more of why I was immediately excited for it while Jody was immediately excited for it. And you were like, yeah, maybe not. I, I agree. Was from the nostalgia hit, but the game actually delivers on all, uh, all cylinders for, for hate that fact <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. and I mean the fact that you have liked drop zone commander yeah. and, and those other fleet games, this is, is such a, again, a strange modern rule design from 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, but and it, that's it, what I mean when I say it's like nostalgia done right. It's not nostalgia yeah. for the sake of nostalgia. If it, it every time they release a a proper squat model, I, I I'm like neat, and then I groan a little bit because I'm like, oh, that's a cool model. That's uh, is it only existing because squats? Yes. 
and I'm like, okay, I, I mean, neat, good. It's a cool model, but I think some people love it. Yeah, yeah and they do, and I'm and I'm glad. It's just there's like a bittersweet to it always yeah. for me of yeah. like. But is this just like lip fan service? This is not this, fan yes. service. Yeah. This is this, this is, is clearly it. somebody loves the game, right. right? Yeah, and 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 it's representative, and maybe that's why I feel better about it. It's representative of the direction that when the game went dead, yeah, the community kept it going, mm -hmm. and what we see here is GW going. Let's respect that, polish this up, yeah, and continue it. And this game will be supported way more than six months that Epic 40,000 was, for example, like that it's, it's got legs. <laughs> Just their delays have, will get yeah, us there. Yeah, right. It, it already is. <laughs> we already know what's coming in the next release too, which is a campaign system, yeah, of course, uh, a bunch of, of new course. units, formations, et cetera. So yeah. that I was, it, the game's going to keep growing and evolving. Bastion flavored dreadnoughts. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Anything else you want to throw out there? The game's good. It's a great game. Okay. That. <laughs> if, if you got the community, definitely get into it. If you have, uh, if you have a handful of you that are interested in checking it out, uh, do so in whatever way you can, whether it's yeah. uh, watching somebody else's game, going to a, an event. I'll say there's going to be some battle. There's battle report on, uh, on, uh, uh the Warhammer channel that it, it's worth checking yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, even the white dwarf article was pretty interesting yeah, to really read about this again. This is, uh, like like most specialist games it's way more fun to drive these things because again all those tactical decisions that are happening it's more fun if you're the person who has the agency to see that happen than Rather it is than to watch it watching. so i wouldn't judge it necessarily on just how it looked from watching a game but i think you're, you're going to get a good good vibe of how, yeah. how it's yeah. going to play i think that's a fair a uh, totally fair point that just watching it played isn't the same as making the the placing the order cho choices yeah. I just realized dude th sorry this is very quick uh, i came to space Marine because of white dwarf Oh, really? I was reading White Dwarf about yeah. something else and read a battle report and it was talking about how the orders and I was like, that sounds kind of cool. This looks kind of neat. Yeah. And like the scale was kind of fun and then like talked about and the way it was described was like and you could see at that time it wasn't photos of miniatures on the battle map. It was a keyed battle. Yes. Map. Right, yes. right, right, right. You know, yep. And I was like, you could see it happening the way they were describing it in a way that 40 K doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, it seems kind of, and that's what got me to go down to the shop and, and read about it. And you know, what's interesting that's about so that funny. Like, this is a, this is a tangent <laughs> on that real quick, how they would show those, like you could see how you were saying you could, they would show you colors and arrows pointing like, uh -huh. okay, he's coming over here and he's coming over here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of American football. Like my, my wife is, she's uh -huh. a huge Denver Broncos fan. And uh -huh. I always joke cause in Ted Lasso, he called him the garbage ass team. <laughs> and so now <laughs> as a Raiders are, fan, I and they too. are. <laughs> and so I always call them that. Uh, so, but anyway, um, I went to a 49ers game and just for context, I had not been to a professional football game in a many years. Uh, the last time I saw a professional football game and I did see the 49ers the last time I saw them play the Chicago bears. OJ Simpson was on the 49ers. That was the last professional football game I went to. <laughs> but what was interesting was I sat behind, and the reason I'm bringing this up is I sat behind um, one of the field goal positions. And for the first time ever, I, like on TV, you don't really see it. But like I could see, and this just reminded me from your thing, I could see like the whole line shift uh -huh. like directions. Like I didn't ever really conceive. I'm like, why are these idiots running up the middle again? Like it never, it never seems to work. And then when you see it from kind of the behind the angle, like you could see the, 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 see where the offensive plane, and, you know, yeah, yeah, the offensive line, like push open to try to push open a hole or push the whole mm -hmm. defensive line to the left or to the right. And I was like, it was it, after I'm 52 watching this and I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I finally get like, I never played football. Right. I don't know, but the, I think it's fascinating that you could get that from a white dwarf and look at, Oh, here's how they're going. Right. A lot of times when I see battle reports, it's like, especially video battle reports. It's like, well, these guys charge these guys. You're like, okay, but what's the bigger, right? What's the bigger yeah. uh, tactic here? What's the bigger strategy? What are you trying to do? And in those battle reports, you could see, this guy's flanking around here. This guy's flanking around here. These guys are pushing and holding this unit up while this unit does this. It's like, oh, and it's interesting. Epic so naturally lends itself to thinking about and playing that way yeah. that you are thinking in terms exactly of my moves point. and battle lines. And you and, talked about that at the beginning. Right. And, and wow, that is, it's such a weird, like nostalgia dopamine <laughs> shock right there of like, I, I can tell you which armies fought. 
Like I could, I don't know which issue of White Dwarf it is, but if I saw the battle report, I'd be like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And it was that discussion and being like caught up in the narrative of it was so satisfying. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and seeing that unfold that again, 40 K is just a different story. It's, yeah, it, it's, for sure. it's the two heroes punching each other. It's the guardsmen making the noble stand against the, the squad of chaos. Without that. and right. That's not this game. There yeah. is no, yeah. that guardsman made a noble stand despite your invincible guy. <laughs> I did have <laughs> one guy who would not die. Well, five guys. Yeah. <laughs> five, <laughs> one stand. five brave Marines yeah. refused to die until they that's did. That's all it takes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think, I think we'll go ahead and end it there. Cause we've gone on long enough. Uh, so, um, you know, until next, look, we got, we got Facebook page, Facebook group. We got discord channel. We got leave us reviews on iTunes. We got a Patreon, Patreon, you know, that helps us provide content and, and helps keep Josh and I eating at the moment. <laughs> uh, it's all great stuff. Uh, it gives you access to a bunch of other stuff. Um, you can read all about it on our website. Uh, and so I'll just end it with that. Until next time, this is Carl. This is Josh. This is Jody. And we're coming to you from the Astronomicon where uh, Titanic things come in small packages. And where epic battles await us all. And this place is a lot bigger than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. This episode of The Independent Characters is protected by the Creative Commons license. If you have further questions as to its use, you can find information on the front page at theindependentcharacters.com.